learn data analytics using only free Google services. This course teaches key data analytics concepts using Google BigQuery, Google Sheets, Google Looker Studio, and Google Colab. Vyas will teach you data analytics using the Google Stack. Hello guys, welcome to this end-to-end -end free data analytics projects course. I'm Vyas Aditya, currently working as an analytics instructor near Berlin, Germany. In this course, I will be covering all the important data analytics topics like Excel, SQL, Python and data visualization and use it to solve interesting questions on varied projects. We will be using the Google Stack here because to use these tools with Google Stack, we do not need any additional software installation. All we need is a Gmail ID. Before we get started, I would like to thank Free Code Camp for the massive impact they are creating and I'm happy to contribute to this course and reach a larger audience so that a lot of people can learn these data analytics topics for free. I also run a YouTube channel named Analyst Aditya. The link is given in the description. Here I have posted end-to-end -end videos on SQL, Python, web scraping projects, Tableau, Power Bay and also tips on how you can build your resume, how you can leverage LinkedIn to get a job and also some tips around interviews and building your GitHub profile. So let's get started with the project series. First up, we will start with spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are one of the most common tools you're going to use in your data analyst job. In this coming project, we are going to use Google Sheets to analyze my own travel expenses data of my trip to varied countries. We are going to use simple, intermediate and also advanced functions using Google Sheets and drive insights and find interesting stats from my data. So this is the data set we are going to work with. It's in fact my original data. I always want to showcase original data and we can do some analysis on it. That's always interesting. So this is like the date. This is the country where I've been to. This is the city. Then I have something called as cost. Let's say this is in euros. There's a column called category ID, right? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, nine, all these numbers. What this is, for this sake, we have a second table called category. So as you see category ID, each of them signifies a specific area where I have spent money, right? One is breakfast, for instance, seven is some entrance ticket to some place or some museum or whatever. Ten is like something that has been done with shopping and so on, right? So we have two simple data sets. And uh, now we are going to solve some questions using Google Sheets, right? Like plenty of questions, plenty of concepts and topics we are going to do. So let me directly jump into the question list. We'll try to crack them one by one, right? This will be great practice for you. We are going to cover a wide array and range of functions as well. So first of all, find the unique values for each of the columns and show us how to count the unique values, right? So unique values for each of the columns. What is the formula you can use? I'll just show you for one specific uh, column. Let us say I want to find the unique countries that I've been to, right? I've been to a number of countries. So how I can do that is using the unique function itself. So you can say unique and just select the full range, right? B2 is to B128. So now I get the unique names of countries that I've been to, right? Around eight countries. So suppose I want to count the unique countries. What we can do? The only difference in the formula is you say count unique and you will select the same range, okay? So now I'll get eight. Why? Because I've been to eight unique countries, right? So if you put unique, you'll get the actual values. If you say count unique, you'll get the number of unique values, right? Same way, if we have to do the same thing for another example, let us say city, I can simply say unique, open brackets and select the different column, right? So I can select this. And you see, I've been to so many different cities, right? Basically, I've been to 12 different cities across eight different countries, right? So unique is a powerful use case. Uh, so do remember that. And when you want to count unique values, use count unique function, right? Very, very relevant. So we have done first question. Now, next question comes, how can you combine the category table with the original data? So I have category table here where I have the actual name of the category. How can I combine it with the original data, right? Maybe I'll just insert one more column here just to kind of create some uh, space. So how can we combine these two? So I have category ID here. 
and I have category ID here, right? They are the same common column. Now we can join these two data sets using the VLOOKUP formula because we have a common matching column, right? How can we do that? So I can add a new column and I will call it category itself. So I will simply say VLOOKUP. I want to look for this category ID value. Where do I want to look for it? I'll go to this table. I will select this range, right? This is the range where I want to find. In this, which column do I want to look for? I want to look for the second column, right? Because second column has the actual value of the category and I want an exact match. So I'll put false, okay? And also remember for the whole formula range, I want this to be fixed, right? Always I'm going to refer to the same A2 to B14 range. So I will just lock it with the dollar. And now I get, okay, category ID one means break first. And now let us say I can just go here and double click the plus. I will get the formula copied accordingly, right? So for example, five, category five means for travel, right? Basically for flights, let us just double check. So five is travel, okay? Now we have the column category also in our original data. We managed to integrate it with a simple VLOOKUP function, very, very powerful function. Next question, what is the total cost spent on breakfast overall? There are multiple ways to do it. I'm going to teach you a simple way using sum if. Okay, so let me go here and like only for bad, uh, breakfast, I want to count the cost, right? So what I can do, for example, I can write breakfast, okay? And I can say sum if, right? What is the range, right? Where I want to check for the criteria, I want to check this column. So I'll select this complete thing, okay? The second thing is the actual criterion, right? What is the criteria? I want it to match with breakfast so i will select this and in the case it matches i want to sum i want to sum the values in this column right so i just select that and leave it okay so i noticed that for breakfast alone overall spent around 400 euros right simple use of sum if right so if we want to verify this for example we can simply put a filter right let us just filter out breakfast this is just to cross check. So I'll filter out breakfast and I can see the total cost. As you see, the sum is coming to 400. So overall, across all these trips for breakfast, I have spent 400 euros. So I'm going to just remove the filter. This is a powerful use case of sum if very good function to know. Okay. Next, uh, total cost spent on travel for Spain. Okay. There's an extra twist here. There are two conditions. Okay. So travel is one column and also specifically for country Spain, right? So in this case, what we can do, we can use a sum ifs function. We want to give multiple conditions, right? So for instance, I will uh, just write these two words here, right? For example, I can write Spain and travel. And now I will use a sum ifs function, right? So I will say sum ifs. Here, the first thing is the sum range. So I want to sum this range. Okay, and now criteria range number one, right? Criteria range number one is basically country. So I'm going to select uh, B2 to B128. What is the first criteria? What is the first criteria? I'm going to select if that ever matches the value here, which is Spain. And then criteria range two. Criteria range two is basically the last column, right? Basically our uh, category column. And what is actual criteria two here? Criteria two is actually if it matches travel okay and i'm going to close and i get the value as 768 right so 768 is the amount i've spent on travels to spain if you see here it's a 280 here on a trip to mallorca and there's one more spain madrid where travel was 488 if you add them up you'll get that number so that is the answer so sum is so sum a column here in the case cost column but based on multiple conditions Country must be Spain. At the same time, the category must be travel. Okay. Another useful use case, I would say. Then how many rows are there in the data that have category as travel? Okay. So we want to count the number of rows here. So this is a simple use case of a count if function. Okay. So I'm simply going to say count if. Uh, so this is the range. Again, I want to check in this range, right? I'll, I'll select them all. And I want to make sure how many of them equate to travel, right? So I have the word set up here already. So I'll just click that cell. And as you see, there are 11 times in 11 rows, 
there is some cost associated with travel right simple use case of the count if function okay moving on to the next one find the month of the date using a calculation in a new column so in this data we are given month right how can we find the uh, i mean we are given the date how can we find the month right i'm just going to show a dummy formula here how you can do it there's actually month function itself directly and you just select month of date okay and you close it you get 12 right so this is december 24 2022 so month is 12 so it gives an auto suggestion if you want you can drag the formula just going to remove it for now but you can use the month function as you see for that question next question use an if formula to show wherever cost greater than 100 are expensive the other value should be shown as cheap okay so i'm going to go back here right so let's call this column like price or something like that so if it is greater than 100 so i will say if this value is greater than 100 right then it is expensive very simple otherwise i'll call it cheap right as simple as that and close the bracket okay so 20 is obviously less than 100 so it's cheap i'm going to drag the formula so this is 230 obviously it's expensive and so on okay easy use case of a simple if function many a times you might use this in your job as well okay moving on to the next one show a pivot table for average cost per country right so what can we do i'm going to just select the whole range right all the rows and columns and now i'm going to just say insert pivot table and i'm going to put it in a new sheet going back to the question average cost per country right so in the rows i can add country right here it is and then in the values i can add the cost right i don't want to show the sum i want to show the average i will select the average so then i get the values right so as you see average cost per country uh, colombia it's yeah around 164 uh, other countries are like slightly lesser right what could be the reason right if we were asked to investigate one step further why this number is high if we go back into the data and deep dive a little bit you see mostly cost is like like this travel is maybe 200 300 and so on but if we notice specifically for colombia travel itself costs 2600 euro right this is the flight ticket uh, going from europe to you know south america is quite costly and this is the anomaly right this is the reason why the average for colombia is high right you you notice this is very high this is the reason you need to be able to investigate and find reasons like that because there is a abnormal value you should be able to find out what is the root cause of that abnormal value right this is an additional thing you could do for this question then a uh, simple uh, a calculation how would you display the first two letters for each country right so i have uh, the country as a column here how can i display the first two letters for each country for example for austria i want to show au we can use a simple text function called left so i would say left i would select the string which is this and they just say two right that will just show the first two letters so if i copy the same formula for instance for here for uh, slovakia you see you will get ESL, right very simple use case of left function very powerful function text function moving on write a function to find or check if a city name contains the letter v okay what can we do for this case so i'm just going to copy this data up to price and uh, i'm going to go to a new sheet and just paste a uh, special like basically the values so now if we want to check if the letter v is there in the word or not we can simply use a find function okay i'll write find so i want to search for the letter v and where do you want to search for i want to search for in the uh, i think it was city or country let's let's just go back here yeah it is for the city right so if it shows value obviously it's it's an error uh, because yeah it is not able to find it right so if i drag this formula down you can see bratislava has the letter v none of these have anything plitwis has the letter v so the interesting thing to note here is vienna has the letter v but it has a capital v right that is the reason it is still showing a value error which means it cannot find v so let us convert this into a capital v and see then we get the value one because it is able to find a capital v in vienna right so remember there's a differentiation between the small letter v and the capital letter v if we want to showcase next one 
formula to show the second, third, and fourth letters of the column category. Right? I'll go to this new sheet. Second, third, and fourth letters, right, of column category, which is here. So what we can do is we can try to use the mid function. So I'll say mid of this particular string. Then I want to start from the second letter and then show the next three letters. So I will put three. So in breakfast, I'll get second letter, third letter, fourth letter, which is REA. Now I can drag the formula down. For lunch, you will get UNC. For dinner, you will get IANN. Travel, you'll get second, third, and fourth is RAV, and so on. Okay. Another useful function to know uh, mid, right? Very relevant. Moving to the next question. Which country cost the most money overall according to the data, right? Which had the highest cost? So for this, again, we can just select everything, right? You can go to the pivot table and say create a pivot table. So again, I'm just going to select country and then I'm going to select in values cost, right? The total cost, right? As you notice here. And then after that, what can we do? Just think about it. So if you notice here, we want to arrange it by sum of cost, but descending, right? So what can we do? We can go here and select sum of cost. Okay. This should work. And then we notice, of course, total cost wise, Colombia and Peru are on, on the top. Right. Overall cost wise, these two are the most expensive. Right. Let me move to the next question. So we are done with question this one, right? So conditional format rows which have country as Spain with red color, date before 12th July 2023, right? Any date that is before 12th July 2023 with blue color. Okay. So let us try this. I'll go to the original data. So country as Spain, right? How can we conditional format? Let me go here. Format, I'll say conditional formatting. So for this whole set, I want to apply a rule. Uh, let us say text is exactly, and then I will write Spain. And I want to do red color, right? So I'll select red color. And you know, the rule is written and it's done. Okay. So that means Spain is coated red, right? Let's see if there is some more Spain later. Yes, it's also given red color, right? That's perfect. Okay, let us move on to the next one, which is for the date, right? So what they are asking us is anything before 12th July should be blue color. So for example, let me select one date. I'll go to format conditional formatting and I say, for example, this cell and I can say custom formula, right? This is cell uh, A2. So I'll say if this is less than, I will use the date function. Okay, so date 2023. July is the seventh month, 12, right? Anything before that, please coat it with blue color. Okay. And I will say done. So by doing that, yes, this is before 12 July, 2023, it is blue color. And what I can do, I can format paint and just drag it along all the way down to the end of the data, right? Like this. And I have stopped here. And now let's say which all got blue color. So as you see, all this date is 13 December. So up to any date before 12th July, which is like up to 10th July got coated with blue color. Okay. This is how you can do conditional formatting for a particular column in Google Sheets. So that question is done. What was the highest value of cost in that given data? This is a simple one line formula. So you can say maximum of the value of cost in this column, right? Which is the full E. So I presume it will be 2600, which I already showed you, right? I think it's the travel that happened with, if I remember right, uh, it will be in Bogota, like Colombia. This is what it is. Okay, moving on to the next question, which category cost the most money in Peru? Here, instead of calculating, I'm just going to go through the data, right? Because there's not a lot of rows for Peru. If we scroll down, we see, um, you know, plenty of uh, combinations here. So what can we probably do? We can try to maybe do the pivot table again. So I'm just going to select everything, right? These columns. And I'm going to say insert pivot table. Okay. The first thing I want to add is I want to add a filter for country. That's the first thing. Um, here we can select what we want to show. I want to clear everything and I just show Peru, right? So it's data only for Peru. Now coming to rows, what can we add here? We can add the category and then in the values, I can add total cost. Okay. So I have these values. Now order by, I can say descending sum of cost. Okay. 
So now I notice again with respect to Peru, to an extent we can see that um, travel is probably uh, the costliest, right? And how do I know this is only Peru? Because here I've selected only for Peru, okay? So travel is costing around uh, 960, right? That's probably one of the most expensive. Now let me move back. Now they're asking, can you create a drop down list of cities and show the total cost of a particular city depending on the city selected, right? So for this, what we can do, I'm going to copy um, all this. I'm going to go to a new sheet, right? I'm going to paste special. I will say values only, right? Now they want a drop down of cities. How can we do a drop down? For that, we can go to data, data validation, right? We can add rules. But before that, we want to find the unique values of cities, right? That will make our calculation easier. So I will write unique and I will select the full list of cities, right? As a first step. So I have the list of cities. From this, I can generate the drop down. Now I can go back to data validation and say add rule. Uh, and then from here, I'm just going to say uh, drop down from a range. Okay. So it's going to apply to basically uh, this cell over here, right? Which is I3, which is written here. And now drop down from a range I'm selecting. And what are the values? So I want to select all these values. Okay. I'm going to click OK and say done. Now let's close. Okay. So now I have the city. And now it's a simple matter of writing a sum if function. Okay. I'm going to say sum if. Then I'm going to say, for instance, city range. So I'm going to select everything. Right. And what is the criteria? If it is equivalent to the one we have in the drop down, which is I3, then please show the total cost. So the sum range of this column, which is column E. Okay. So it's 143 for Bratislava. Now, if I change it to Berlin, it's 144. Banja Luka is 281 and so on, right? If I change it to Plitwis, it's 252 and so on, right? The total cost, uh, depending on the city selected, right? We did data validation, created a drop down. How many unique months are there in the data? How can we find this? So uh, to find this, what we can do, I mean, we have so many months here, right? So we can first try to find the month. So I'll insert one column to the left again, right? Let me say month. And then as you all know, we can put a simple formula month of date A2. That's done. I'm just going to drag this. Okay. And now from this column, I can simply write count unique, right? To count the number of unique months, write the formula with the right spelling. And I want to do it for H2 to H128. And then that's it. So we have like, we have only four unique months. It's a little bit weird. Let's check. We have 12, 1, 6, 7, and again 12, right? More or less, yeah. So you have December, if we notice, then you have July, June, then, yeah, January, there is there, and then again, December, right? So the count unique values says that it's only four. So 12, 1, 6, and 7. Okay. Then moving on to the next one. So this is a bit more complicated, I think. They want us to create a grid with countries on the one side, categories on the other. Use the index match to showcase formulas to display the total cost depending on a combination. This question seems very, very clumsy. But let's break it down and see what it actually means, right? So for this question, what I'm going to do is, so they're asking based on countries and then categories and the total cost, okay? So easiest option I can think about is, first I'll create a pivot table as usual. I will say insert pivot table in a new sheet, okay? Now, step number one, I will bring country to rows. Then I'll bring a uh, category to columns. And then for the values, I want, I'll click and say sum of cost. Okay. So this is done. Now we have for all the different categories, the thing. So now they want us to create a drop down, right? So this is going to be a bit tricky. So let us say I will have Austria here, for example, right? Just to show you a simple example. 
then let us say i write dinner here okay so now for austria for dinner what was the total cost right if we see the grid we see the value 12 how can we use index match to show this automatically right so what we can do we will have to use formulas right first i will try to match okay the value of austria and see over in this grid which row does it match to i'm going to select all this and now i will get it matches the first row right because austria comes in the first row so if i have had to change this to bosnia then it will show second row because in this list of values bosnia comes in the second row right so this is one value the same match i will use to see where does dinner come in this full list of categories so i can say match of dinner right and now i want to compare it with this list of categories so i'm going to select all these values all the way up to travel okay and i put a zero because i want an exact match so it shows that dinner is the second column right if i were to let's say select game then it would be the fourth column right because break first dinner entrance game right so let me move it back to dinner so now i have where it comes in the country like which row and where it comes in the category like where where is the column basically now what we can do right once we do these two steps we can use a index function right and now what we need to do is we have to select the whole range right just select the range of the 13 columns and the countries right no need to select the grand totals selecting the whole range and in this we need to put 2 comma 2 right that was the value we had we get 40 right so instead of 2 comma 2 i can make so i can substitute it with this cell values which is b19 and c19 right so i'll make it b19 i'll make this c19 now i get 40 so for bosnia for dinner it costs 40 right let us say now i change it to peru so for peru so this value has changed so peru for dinner for peru for dinner it cost 189 right so now the grid changes automatically if i change dinner to entrance for peru for entrance right for peru for entrance it costs 200 and we get that value now our value is dynamic so you need to match the column and the row and then put it into an index function for the whole array and then accordingly based on the row and the column your value will automatically change right cool use case of index and match moving to the next question 21st question can you use a filter function to showcase only data when country equal to columbia right so what i'm going to do again i'm going to copy this right the whole data i'm going to put it in a new sheet okay i'm going to pay special so filter function to show only the information when country is columbia right so for this we can use a filter function which is directly there in google sheets i'm going to say filter right so let us say i want to filter the whole range of data so i'll select everything right and what is the condition that i want to apply i want to apply it for this column right basically country column and say whenever this is equal to columbia we can write like this right so filter what is the range you want to show then which column you want to filter and what is the criteria here it has to be equal to columbia so i'm going to write like that now you notice i got like with just one formula it's an array formula i got all the rows just for columbia right basically columbia and in that there was only one city which is bogota right super powerful function filter so definitely learn it very good to know moving back to the questions they're saying use text join function maybe this is new for us to show cities separated by a hyphen depending on the name of the country right for one particular date of your choice right this seems very very uh, confusing you know so let us maybe go back to the data right over here so they are keen to select one particular date right so for example let us select just 24th december right there's only austria in here but i will still copy this to a new sheet okay so for this date for the particular country right showcase all the cities separated by a hyphen right so in this case austria has only one city right how can we apply this function how can we apply this so you'll have to say text join okay and then you want to separate them by a hyphen you put that first 
then if you want to if there is empty values if you want to ignore you can leave it blank so i'm going to leave it blank and then what do you want to showcase so i will basically put a filter formula here you say so here i want to basically showcase the city okay and the criteria is this thing should be equal to a particular country right austria for example let's see what we get so i get vienna 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 separated by hyphen right just like that hypothetically if i had something else like salzburg or something then as you see i'll get vienna vienna salzburg vienna right so essentially this is what it is if we want to test this formula on a better data i can also go back to my previous sheet right and grab some other data where i have multiple countries right multiple cities like peru has lima on the different days cusco on a different day machu picchu on a different day right so maybe i can just grab some of this to just show you so i'll just copy all this come back to sheet 7 right let me just uh, paste it again here like this right so the columns are not sorted let me just delete them for now and also remove this column now what i can do here if i have to do text join i could do the same thing right text to join delimiter here is the hyphen then i'm going to ignore the empty and the text so i can as usual put a filter on a filter for this and then i'm going to say based on the criteria that is this is equal to Peru. okay now i'll get lima lima basically all these city names they are coming in an order and hyphen is there to separate each of them right that is the whole purpose of this question so good function to not text join it's not so complicated but not commonly used also but it's good to know it's like an add-on question which country costs the highest money for travel right so i think we did a kind of similar question somewhere so uh, let's go back to one of the pivot tables so here i have uh, sum of cost right so like let me go back to edit which country cost the highest for travel right so here i'm gonna not going to show only one item i'm going to select everything okay and then let me just remove country from here right here i will add a category right so i want to see only for travel right so i'm going to clear and select only travel that is step number one okay and actually here in the rows i'm going to remove category and i'm going to add country right and now the filter is only applying for travel as you notice which country cost the highest for travel again it's columbia 2600 as we can see we can also sort and see but yeah it costs the most for travel i think we did a similar question before insert a pie chart to show cost breakdown per category right so i can go back to pivot table 7 uh, cost breakdown per category so what can we do um, i'm just going to remove the filter here and uh, instead of country i can add uh, cost breakdown by category so i have this so i can now simply select this full thing right and i can say the chart and we get pie chart right so we get the percentages stay cost 19.7 percent travel was the most expensive 57 percent breakfast 4.8 percent dinner 4.6 percent and so on right simple pie chart can showcase okay which cost the most in a very visually appealing format then translate the word travel into spanish right so here we can use a google translate function itself so i'm going to say google translate what is the text right the text is travel so i'm going to put that source language right i want to translate it from english obviously this is english to spanish spanish will be es so if i translate this i get viaja like j sounds like a head sound so that means travel right so you can do that cool so we have done that let's move to the next question display total cost spent per month right remember december was there in two years but they are looking at month level so we can use the same month although it was different years and let us see right so what can we do 
we can maybe go to the original data again right so i'm going to simply say insert first let me copy this to a new sheet right because i want to do uh, the month calculation as well um, let me just say paste special right i just want to paste the values so i'm going to do month and say month of uh, this date okay and then drag the formula so step number one step number two select them insert pivot table create so rows will have month then values will have sum of cost and then percentage of total right so for that here you can see uh, values is shows as you can select percentage of column then that will show okay 80 percent of the cost came from december right this is an easy way to do it okay let's move to the next question how many days were spent in spanish speaking countries right how do we know which is spanish speaking this like needs some basic knowledge so here i know for example spain colombia and peru are the spanish speaking countries right so what can we do i can again copy this data and put it into a new sheet i will paste special okay then i can put a filter and only select spanish speaking countries right what is those peru spain and colombia right so these are the dates now count the unique days right so i'll simply say count unique of this right so now, now i have the filter data let's say i can copy this and put it into another new sheet right so now here i have only spain peru and colombia right now i can find the unique number of days so i can say count unique of this column basically so there are about 22 unique days i have spent in these spanish speaking countries right that is there then concatenate country and city separated by a hyphen right this seems a simple question how can we uh, concatenate country and city so let us go to the original data again or this column for example i'm going to remove the filter again right concatenate country and city so we can do it two ways we can use concatenate this one which is country then put a hyphen and then select the city right this is option number one austria hyphen vienna option number two is you can select this put an ampersand then hyphen ampersand and then the city c2 right so either use ampersand or you can use concatenate function both are going to work to do this then how do you remove duplicates from the country column so this is also very straightforward if i go back to the original data let us copy the country column into a new sheet so i'm going to pay special values so now if i want to remove duplicates i can get to data data cleanup remove duplicates and now i get the only the original countries the unique countries which is eight austria slovakia germany spain bosnia croatia colombia and peru okay so i hope you enjoyed the video we have managed to solve all the questions i'll post this sheet also in our description have a look at it just to finish off suppose some of the formulas you are not aware of right you can obviously use chat gpt so i'm going to show you some interesting examples where even if you don't know the formula how you could leverage chat gpt let us take simple example of that google translate question for travel so you can write write me a google translate function in google sheets to convert the word travel from english to spanish okay simple example chat gpt will probably give you uh, the formula google translate function it says travel en and es right en is english yes the target language is spanish right so a simple level it can easily teach you uh, things like this right if we are to just give it one more scenario for example here i have like the data right let's say country is in column b cost is in column e i want to find only the total cost for country spain right we want to do some if but let's see if we can generate that using chat gpt right i have column b as country
column E as cost. Write me a summary formula to show only the cost when the country column has value, let's say Spain, right? And it's going to give a simple sum if formula. It's assuming that I had this. So it simply says sum if B is to be Spain and then do the cost of that column, right? So if I can copy this code, come here and paste. That's a double equal to, let me just remove that. You see, we get 1747, which is kind of the cost for Spain, okay? So if you're not aware of the formula also, you can use chat GPT. Please remember that. Give the right prompts and you will learn the formulas, okay? I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in another project. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us for more videos. There are more topic related videos like this with projects on SQL Python coming up. Stay tuned. Spreadsheets are a great tool to start with. However, not always you get data in spreadsheets. Especially if the data is very large, it becomes prudent to understand how to write queries and get data from databases. In this coming project, we are going to use Google BigQuery to write SQL queries and analyze information on my own expenses data from 2023. This expenses data has detailed breakdown of expenses across various categories. We are going to write simple and also intermediate and advanced SQL queries using Google BigQuery to drive insights. So once again, welcome to this practical project. We are going to use real data to understand and learn SQL, write queries and make insights. And we're going to use Google BigQuery. Okay. So I have some data here. For example, there's the date, uh, the company basically where this expense was done. Uh, there is something called category ID. We'll learn about this further. And what was the cost, right? Like what was the amount spent? So there's a separate table called category ID and category. So you have category ID and the category. So for example, one is rent, five is recharge, eight is shopping and so on. Now we're going to try and answer questions by uploading this data to Google BigQuery. We are going to answer a lot of questions. Okay. So what is the first step? You can go and put this URL. I'll put it in our description as well. And you will land in a place like Google BigQuery. Okay. Now you can say create project as a first step. Give it a name, BigQuery analysis, right? You can give whatever name you want. I'm going to say create. Okay, that's the step number one. It will take some time to create a project. Okay, and this is where we can actually upload our data and start writing queries. So now it's loaded. So over here, I can go and say create data set. So data set, let me say uh, expenses. Okay, I can give it any name I want. Rest you can leave it as such and just say create data set. Okay, so now I have a data set called expense. In this, I can upload tables. Okay, so how are we going to upload tables? So I'm going to go and download this as a CSV file. Okay, so I've downloaded that. Same way, I will download category also as a CSV file. Now I have downloaded both. So I can go here and say, first of all, create table. So I want to upload a table. So I'll select upload. So as a first step, I'll select uh, the data table. Okay, and I can give it a name data. Over here, I will say auto detect and create table. Right, so first I'm uploading the data table. So now we have the data table loaded. You can go to 3D's buttons and click on query. And you can select everything from the table, right? I will just remove this uh, limit. So if we select everything from the table, you get the data now, okay? So basically here, what you have is BigQuery analysis 412600. That's the name of the project. Expenses is the name of your data set and data is the name of your table, okay? You can also go here and click on open to understand the data types. Like there's date column, which is date. Company is a string. Category ID is an integer. Cost is an integer, okay? Same way, I want to upload the other table, which is category. So I will again say create table. I will say upload and I want to browse my computer to upload. So I'm going to come and say uh, category and give it a name category itself. 
right? So it's easy to understand, auto detect and creatable. Okay, again, it might take a few seconds and it will finish loading. So now I also have the category table. So if I say query and I select star, I'll be able to see the category table, right? So as you notice, category table has category ID. Uh, the data table also has category ID. This is the common column between the two, okay? Now we have uh, both the data sets ready and the tables ready. So let's start uh, writing our queries and answering questions. First question, find the unique categories in the data table, okay? So I'm going to go here. So how do you do unique categories? I can say distinct category ID, right? As simple as that. And then I just run the query. So of course there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the data table. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the query and I'm gonna save it here. Okay, that's the query. So next one, show the purchase which had the highest cost. Okay, so let me go back to this table and select everything. So the purchase which had the highest cost. So basically we want to find the maximum, right? So I can simply say maximum of cost, right? This is a very simple formula to get started. These are more like warm up questions. So we get 630, right? So that is the answer. So I'm just gonna copy this and come here and paste the query, okay? Write a query to show only first 20 rows of data. So what is the logic we need to use? So if you say select everything, you'll obviously get all the rows, right? So if you have to select only the first uh, 20 rows of data, what can we do? You can simply write uh, the statement called limit, okay? So you can say limit 20. Uh, when you write that, it's gonna show only 20 rows. Yeah, as you see here, now we are only able to see 20 rows, okay? So I'm gonna save this query as well. So these are all pretty quick. Yeah, like if it's multiple lines, it's coming here. So maybe I'll remove it from here. And yeah, I can paste it here. Okay, so this is question uh, number three. Okay. Maybe I'll just create question numbers. Okay, so one, two, three, and so on. Then, you know, you can just do like this. So this was question number three, right? Now let's move to the next question. Show the unique company names where money has been spent. So I go back here and I say, select everything. So unique company names where money has been spent. So I can simply say distinct company, right? It's very similar to one of the previous questions we just solved. So you see, you see the company names, like there are like yeah, a lot, like close to 21 company names. These are the unique names where money has been spent, okay? So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna say question four and paste my query, okay? Let me go back to the questions. Next question, how many unique days has money been spent in each month? So in each month, how many unique days, right? So for that first, we need to also find the month. So how can we do this question? So let me say, select everything from the table, right? So now I have a lot of dates like Jan, Feb, March, April, and so on, uh, 2023. That's I think even May and June. So what can we do for month? We can try to use a formula called extract of month from date okay so if i run this query let's see what we get we're able to get the months right one two three four five six the question here is unique days money has been spent in each month okay so i can select the month and unique days what can we do for unique days you can do a count of distinct date right um and then you can do that and then uh, group by this uh, extract of month from date itself right so that will give for each month the unique number of days let us now run the query right so as you notice in uh, one month one which is january 13 unique days some kind of uh, purchase was done 
in month two february it was 18 and so on okay so the highest seems to be in march when there was something spent on 21 unique days right that's why we are doing count of distinct date so this is going to be question number five so i'm going to paste the query okay let's move to question number six for the above question do the same just show it in descending order right so what is the difference here the same thing i want to show in descending order of this count distinct date so i can simply say order by count of distinct date and then say descending okay so now we will see the month of march which are the highest number of unique days on top right now this is in descending order so i'm going to copy this and uh, this is going to be question number six right almost same we are just also doing some kind of sorting okay that's question number six and anyways i'll put this in our description the solution also so you can use it later let's move to the next question show only data of category id three comma four okay this is question number seven so again i'm going to just delete all this and i'm going to say select star okay uh, category id 3 comma 4 only that so what we can do it's a very simple thing so you can say where category id in 3 comma 4 right you need to use the in statement so this will only show all the data all the expenses of these three categories i mean these two categories 3 and 4 as you see okay if you see a lot of 4 uh, category 3 is very minimal i think just once so that's the answer okay this is question number 7 so I'm going to paste the query here. Okay, let's move to the next question. Question number eight. What is the highest category ID of expense in March? Right. So we also want to filter for the month here. Let's go here. Highest category ID of expense in March. Okay. So first of all, what we can do, we can say where extract of month from date is equal to three. Okay, because we want for March category id with the highest expense so what we can do we can write category id we can do the sum of cost right the total cost and then we want to group by category id right and not only that they want the highest right so i can also do order by sum of cost descending right very similar to the previous question so what I'm doing here is I'm just filtering for month number three, which is March for each category ID, the total cost and then grouping by category ID, obviously, and then also ordering by sum of cost descending so that we can see the highest on top. Okay. So now let me run this query and we can see category ID one had the highest expense. It was 630. We don't know what this is. We'll see it later, but category ID one had 630 euro worth expenses. So I'm going to copy this query. So this is question number eight. Okay, so we're done with question eight. Let's move to the next question, question nine. Which store, I think by store they mean the company, had the highest expense in May? Okay, so now it's May, so I'm just gonna change this. Uh, sum of cost is the same. So when they mean store, it means company. So I'm gonna select company and then group by company, right? and order by sum of cost descending because i want to see the highest and this is for the month of may so let me run this now you notice okay prima again right like this is the rent that i spend usually every month so prima has the highest the next one is revue which is a kind of supermarket okay so this is how you can do this question month number five may uh, which company or store had the highest expense so i'm going to copy this again this is question number nine right so we'll keep moving next is question number 10 uh, question number 10 which category had the lowest total number in february right lowest total number i think they mean lowest total cost for february which category okay so now there is a small twist so here right in the data table if you notice if i say select everything Just going to close this and say star 
So if you notice here, I have only category ID. I don't have the name of the category. Category comes from this table, right? So if I click on this table, there's category ID and category, right? So we can try to join on category ID between the two tables. Uh, and we need to find for uh, February, okay? So what can we do here? So I will uh, take from this table, data table. I will call it as A and I want to join this with basically um, the other table. So the other table name is also the same almost. So I can copy like this and instead of data, the table's name is category, right? I'm going to substitute it like that and say as B, right? So we are going to try and do a join. And what is the common connection? Both have category ID, right? So I'm going to say A dot category ID equal to P dot category ID, right? And now from the second table, I can select the category. And from the first table, I can select the total cost. Okay. I can do this and then I group by B dot category. And what else uh, for February, right? So I need to also do one where condition. So where extract of month from date. Right, that filter is equal to 2, right? 2 means February. So let's run this and see. It will be again rent only, rent is highest usually. But then next one we see it is grocery, right? 276, which makes sense. The rent grocery is usually my highest expense. So some restaurant and other things we can see as well. Okay, so this is how you can join on a common column, put a filter and also group by to see the cost, right? All right, so I'm going to just copy this. This is question number 10, right? So I'm going to paste it here and let's continue. Question number 11, show the data only where shop name, I guess this means company name contains the letter W, okay? So this is just one table again. So I will say select everything from this table shop name right so where where we can say company like percentage w percentage so this means that using the like we can find whichever contain the letter of the word uh, w so you have uh, for instance Reve, right majorly and woolworth right capital w it starts with that letter so these are the shops right so i'm going to copy this and paste it here this is question number 11 moving on to question number 12 Find a way to get the category based on category ID. This is what I showed you uh, just a while back. So let us say from this table, I select everything. I'll say A dot star. I will call it as A. How can we join with the other table? You can simply do a join. And yeah, just copy this table name. And then just replace the last part. Instead of data, it is category table. So I can do that as B and then you can say on A dot category ID equal to B dot category ID, right? And I can say B dot star as well, right? So I'm joining both the tables. Let me see whatever is possible. So now I can see, okay, company prima category ID one, second table also has a category ID. So since it's a duplicate column name, it's giving underscore one. And what is the actual name of category? So one is rent, two is grocery, and so on, right? So we'll if, if I move forward, uh, I see six is ticket, seven is cosmetics, and so on, right? This is how you can join both the tables. I will just copy this. Okay, this is question number 12. Okay, let's move to next question. Question number 13. Is there any category ID not present in the data table? Okay. How can we do this? So first of all, let us select this table, right? Category table, the original table. And let's see what is there. So over here, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So 10 unique category IDs. But if I were to see the original table, the other one data table and say from that table, distinct category ID, So 
So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So that means category ID 10 is actually missing from data table. But how can we show this, right? Is there a PA to show this by comparing the two tables, right? So what we can do here, so we can select distinct category ID. This is obviously an option and then manually compare. But other than that, what we can do, we can make our category table like primary like this as a this time okay and then i'm going to join this with data table as b okay so far so good on a dot category id equal to b dot category id right this is very simple so again i can select everything from both tables for sake of simplicity and then here you have to write a join but i'm going to do a left join right so what left join will do is it will show all the category ids from the category table if there is a match in data table it will show the match otherwise it will show null okay so if i do like this let's see what happens we get 115 rows okay so you can scroll down can even make this 200 so i see all the results in one page if you notice i will see everything right all the data but at the bottom right category ID 10 is not there in the data table so you get everything is null right so how can we now spot only the ones which are null you can say where uh, b dot let's say date is null right any column which is null you can just pick that because when there is a match, obviously there will be a date in the data table. Then we see this, right? Then we see this category ID. This is the one that is there in the category table, but it is not there in the data table, right? So there has no not been any expense related to this category others. So I'm going to copy this. This is, I think, question number 13. Okay, again, a simple use of left to join. Now let's move to question number 14. Show categories with expense more than 150 for the month of April right so again uh, let us delete this so this time I, I will make our data table as primary as usual i will make our category table as secondary okay and i just want to do a normal join right wherever there are matches so that is all fine on will still remain the same now from the first table again i want to know the category Right, and what do we want? Uh, expenses. So I'll say uh, category actually comes from the second table, right? B table. So I'll do B dot category. And from the first table, I want to do cost. So I will say sum of A dot cost. Is there any other filter? Month of April, right? Note that down. So where extract of month from date, right? So April is the fourth month. So we can say is equal to four. Then group by B dot category, right? This is step number one. Now let us see what we get. So we get a lot of expense. Okay, now they want to show only those with more than 150. Okay, so what can we do here? We can simply say having, right? On an aggregated calculated column, we can put a filter like using having. Having sum of A dot cost greater than 150. Now we'll see only those categories. It's going to be rent and grocery. The rest are below 150, right? Nice use of the having clause. This is question number 14. Okay. So let us move to question number 15. They're asking any patterns in ticket expenses over time, right? So what do they mean? Let us uh, combine both these tables together, right? And I'm going to say a dot star comma b dot star, right? So let's see what we get. So there is a category. Um, let's see if there's a category like ticket. So I'll say where category equal to ticket. Okay. Not sure if there is something like that, but let's see. Okay. So there is no data. Maybe it's capital T. Let's try like that. And you see DB is Doshe Barn Company where I spend for tickets. Yes, there are ticket columns. They're asking any patterns. Okay. So maybe what we can do now. We can try and do it like per month right so i'll say as usual uh, maybe i'll extract the month right 
so i'll say extract of month from date which we usually do and uh, pattern so i'll try to put some of cost itself right and here it should be b dot category equal to ticket and uh, now group by basically this extract of month from date so i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it here okay if you notice here just by looking at it there's a lot of 33s but then there's a, a 98 as well so let's see what has happened okay so january was 33 feb feb was 33 uh, for some reason in march there has been a lot of expenses it's become 99 april is 66 then from me basically this uh, deutschland ticket started so me and my wife each took for 49 euro so it became standardized okay so for some reason mars there have been a lot of trips so it has increased right so that is the trend in terms of tickets so i'm going to copy this this is question number 15 okay i'm saving all the queries so you'll have access next uh, which restaurant has received the maximum orders based on days right so that means like which restaurant has received the orders on the unique number of days right that's what it means actually so restaurant obviously is a category so i'll put restaurant okay and here the company right company is where the name of the restaurant or the name of the shop is there so i will say company and the question is maximum orders based on number of days so we want to count the unique days which we kind of did a little bit earlier so count of distinct date right for the restaurant category so first let's run that and see so so many restaurants are there right sarano bound is there kebab shop is there so panda seems to be the highest we could also simply say order by count of distinct date descending right so pandas is a restaurant where we buy momos that has been the most prominent in the six months being there nine times right that's the highest so another interesting use case of count distinct order by alongside group by okay so this was question number 16 so i'm going to paste the query let's move further 17th question calculate average spend per day for restaurants okay average spend per day that means you have to find the total cost and divide it by the number of unique days you've been to the restaurant right this is one way of doing it so the cost is what sum of cost divided by count of unique days right this will kind of you could also do count of date uh, this is also another option right assume that maybe on the same day you've been to two restaurants then this number can change so anyways let us do both the calculations and see what is coming so basically average spend per day for restaurants so i'm going to do with unique days so it shows on average when we go to a restaurant we spend around 15 right based on unique days if i change this to days right let's see what happens yeah slightly lesser 14.5 but still it's 14 to 15 euro on every visit on average to a restaurant okay so that's what happens so i'm going to save this question number 17 right that's basically that 14 to 15 euro is the amount we spend on average when we go to a restaurant right some may be lower some may be higher we we are not sure about that but basically that is the overall average which day of week saw the highest spend in me right so we need to know the function for day of week is it there maybe we can also check with chat gpt highest spend for the month of may so remember it's for the month of may so this is question number 18 right which day of week so here we don't even need the category table so i'm going to remove that so i have date right so we have this function called format date and you can say like percentage w so if you are not sure we can go and ask chat gpt as well right so always chat gpt is there to help so group by weekday or day of week in google bigquery 
and find total cost please tell me formula something like that you know you can type something like this should give and it's going to give you a general example it's giving sales date and it's saying format date okay percentage a right so that seems to be useful so we will just copy that so as you see sunday is one um, saturday is seven right so let's go and try that here we have date the question is highest spend in may okay so we still need to keep that in mind so i'll say sum of cost okay, that is obviously there and then group by this so this step is covered but before that it is may so i have to say where extract of month from date is like it's month number five so i have to put five right let's run this and see so as you see we already get the date so we get different ones so it looks like tuesday is the highest right and this is all categories put together it looks like tuesday is the highest obviously this is 734 that is because maybe on that day i paid the rent right rent itself is 630 that is the reason right that becomes a big number but other than that you see wednesday is also quite high right for the month of may so i'm going to copy this this is question number 18. okay i'm going to leave it here let's move to the next question question number 19. calculate total cost for grocery per month and show month in year and month format right separated by hyphen so total cost for grocery per month so let's go back here and let's do the join again right because we need to identify uh, this particular uh, category called as grocery so for that we need to join back with the category table so i'm going to again write category that is step number one and what is the common column on a dot category id so we are just going to repeat the same thing again this is done now where class we have to put where this b dot category should be equal to grocery right it's g with the capital and i think the spelling here is wrong okay and now we want to find total cost per month and show the month in year and month format so for that what we can do like percentage a you also have percentage y percentage m right this will show in year month format total cost okay i think that is pretty much it and i can also do a group by right and what do i want to group by i want to group by this year month so i guess this should be it let's run the question is total cost of grocery per month so for example january is 210 may is 183 feb is 276 march is 178 april is 174 and so on right june is also pretty less and what else have they asked they just asked to calculate that so i'm just going to copy this right i'm going to put it here as question number 19. okay let's move further Question number 20, calculate total spend for shops starting with capital letter R, okay? I think they want like, for example, stuff like Revy. So I'm going to just say sum of cost from the original table. I don't want to join. And uh, the column name is company. So I'll say where company like R percentage, right? So that starts with the letter A. So it will give us the value 859. So if I want to see what are the companies, we can also do a group by. So you can just do like this and then say group by company. I'm not sure if there is anything else. Anyways, let's see. Right, there's Revy and Rossman, right? That's pretty much it. So I'm going to just copy this. This is simple. Question number 20. Right, so we are kind of getting closer to the end. Let's continue. 21. How many unique companies exist? in the shopping category right so again we have to 
go back to the join right so maybe i'm going to come here and uh, pick this up right i'm going to put it back here so the question goes like this unique companies that exist in the shopping category okay so we can say where b dot category right equal to shopping so i will just say select star right first let's see if there is something like this actually for spelling is right for shopping yeah we have for instance steady amazon and woolworth i think that is pretty much it anyway i will say distinct company that will give us the distinct values so teddy amazon woolworth right only three companies are unique that exist in the uh, shopping category okay that was question number five remember right 21 okay move to question number 22 what is the spending pattern at revay month ways and any insights okay so we can go back and pick this question up right i'm gonna copy this so revy and month wise right so i don't really need the join here i think we just need the original table so i'll i want by month so i'll put company comma per month total cost and then group by company as well and uh, you can say where company equal to revy right Think this should work so the question again let's see it's question 22 spending pattern at revy month wise okay so revy january 128 february 128 right very very standardized march 104 so march and april 145 march has dropped a little bit i think right and then um yeah it's 120 and 130 it's very very stable pretty much around the same mark as you see more or less so it's like 120, 130, that kind of range, right? So there's no trend, but March, I can see it's 104. That was the month like I made lesser purchases because my wife had gone home. That also makes sense. It's another use case of this format date function. So this is question number 22. So I'm going to paste. Okay. So we have, I think about 12 more question. Any trend with respect to eating at Domino's? Okay, so same thing here uh, the company name will become if we see the original data right it will become dominoes okay so where we just remove this and say dominoes okay any trends so i'll just see month wise 1722 it's standardized i think in march i've ordered a lot more i didn't cook much so March, it has been a lot, 49. Otherwise, it's 17, 14, 15, right? This is the standard if you order once a month. Uh, so we can also see distinct dates I have ordered in each month as well, just to see the patterns. So if you notice, yeah, most months it's one. In March alone, I've ordered three times with Domino's, okay? That's the pattern. Uh, that is question number 23. I'm going to save the query. Let's move to the next question 24 is there any month where grocery expense has is a bit different or has it changed a little bit right so i think we did query similar to this right so i'm going to copy this so i'm going to run this again so grocery expense yeah as you see it's kind of standardized right january is 210 feb is 276 there's picked up and then yeah march and april as you see it's below 200 so like there's been a drop and may is again 180 right so it looks like february had a peak right like february had a lot of grocery purchases and then uh, june again dropped june we went for a trip as well we were not there for a few days in germany so i guess that's why it's dropped to 156 so i can strongly see february has peaked it's a month where we have purchased a lot of grocery right that was question number 24. So February had a slight jump in terms of grocery expenses. Then move to 25. Show the show only the company with highest spend in each category for April, right? So this is probably a question where 
we might need to use something like windows functions right only only the company with the highest spend in each category for april okay so i'm going to i probably don't need the category id i'll just remove that the join so i have the original table so i probably need to find the total cost right so what we can do we can do category id then uh, the company so the, all this is good and then this is only for specifically the month of april right so i have to say where extract of month from date is equal to 4 right and then say group by category id for comma company so i could just copy this right so i get each month i mean each uh, category company and then this right now what if i want to show only the highest like for example uh, category 2 is grocery in that there is revenue there is interest store right so what if i want to show only the highest right same way in 4 which looks like a restaurant there is panda jaipur dominos kebab and sarona bhavan so only the highest right sarona bhavan is the highest spending how can i pick and show that so this is interesting so i'll say sum of cost as total cost right this is step number 1 now I can put this whole thing into a CT, right? So with class, I can say with, let us say, uh, data new or something as, right? So I can do step number one like this. And now from this data, I can select company, comma, category ID, and then I can do a rank, okay? So I can say rank over partition by category id so in each category id and also do a order by that total cost column descending right to show the one on top and say as ranking right and then i say from final new right that is the name of the temporary class or table i have created with the width so now i can run this table final new must be qualified with the data set right so there is some error here it's not final new it's data new right put the wrong name now it should work okay so now i see okay in category 84 sarana bound is one in category 85 labara that is one in amazon and teddy or category 8 which is shopping amazon is one right now i want to show only the ones that are one to do that what we can do in bigquery we have a formula called qualify you can say qualify ranking equal to one right this is like a bar clause but meant for window functions so if we write that then we will see only the ones that are ranked one in each category right so reve is coming as the highest in uh, grocery rossman comes in cosmetics sarana bhavan in restaurant Amazon in shopping and I think DB is the only thing in tickets. So we are getting all that, right? So this is a nice use case of the with class, normal group by and also learning to use the window function like rank and filtering rank or window function, we can use qualify, right? So great question, this one. Question number 25, I'm going to save. Okay. 20, question 26 let's move on we have i think few more questions percentage change in total cost for each month and find the month with the highest percentage change so anytime you have percentage change year on year it's time to use a window function like lag okay so for each month percentage change in cost they're asking so i'm going to start with select and uh, we need month right so we can write a uh, format date function and say percentage y percentage m right that is step number one and we want to uh, find the total cost right so i can say sum of cost and then copy this and put it in the group by okay 
so there is no filter here so i will remove where and i'm just going to run this okay i think there are two commas i will remove the one of them format date uh, it should be for the date function right i mean date column so i forgot to put that over here as well right so sometimes be careful you might see <laughs> errors like this silly mistakes only right so i'm getting total cost all months okay so this is great so now what i can do i can put this in a with final as in a cte right that is the first step now i have to calculate percentage change so now i can say select let us say this format date whatever is called as year month i give it an alias name so you can say year month total cost and also to see the previous value i can say lag of this column lag of total cost then over here there is just month and year right so we don't really need a partition so we can say order by this year month column right ascending order and i can call this as previous month cost right and say from final let's see what we get so you see each month so for example uh, january 1062 is total cost previous month is not there it's null february total cost 1166 previous month value was 1062 we get that and you know here it's not in order but for example march 1071 previous month cost is february that's 1166 and we are getting that here right so this is like we are getting them side by side how can we now calculate percentage change so for that it just becomes a little more complicated so i will put this whole thing into another cte so with i will say final 2 as or something like that okay close the brackets just drag this down and now from this final two i can select year month then i want to do this percentage difference so i will write total cost minus previous month cost divided by previous month cost right from final two that's the second ct and then i want to order by year month right and if I want to do percentage, I can also put this whole thing and multiply it by 100, right? Let's see what we get. Okay, so we don't really see the values. So if I want to also see the values over here, I can put those columns as well, right? So total cost, previous month cost as well, and run this just for you to have that appeal so from for january there's nothing it makes sense for february if you see uh, it's basically a 9.7 percent increase right from january so from 1062 it became 1166 then from feb to march it dropped again so minus eight percent decline from here to april again it declined by about two percent then from here it increased by about seven percent then from 1125 it dropped to 1084 so 3.7% drop so the highest has been from jan to feb where we saw 9.79% increase okay this is how you can use multiple cte's and also use lag to do this percentage change okay interesting and slightly complicated question was question number 26 i'm going to paste the query here let's move to question 27 okay do the same as that question but only for restaurant category okay so if you, if you have to do only for restaurant category the query is going to remain pretty much the same and we you know we have to just put a filter on the restaurant category right so if i go here and open this table in a new tab i see for example restaurant is category id 4 so i can go back to our query and over here i simply put where category category id equal to four right so that will filter the total cost but only for restaurant right nothing else changes so it's running let's see what we get 
now we see some stark differences for example from feb to march the jump is significant 50 percent jump so i told you march i didn't cook much i used to order outside that kind of makes sense right and then same way then it drops back again in april and then again drops and then from uh, may to june again there is a jump right so 73 percent jump so it's like a lot of trends like going up coming down but this is what it is for this restaurant category q27 okay let's move to question 28 we are nearing the end find the date with highest number of unique categories where money was spent okay this is a fairly simple question so i'm going to remove everything else okay delete all that is there find the date with the highest number of unique categories okay so let's say select date and then count of distinct category id right on a particular date what were the unique categories and then we want to find which was the highest date in this so i'll say group by date order by discount uh, distinct uh, category id and say you put double o remove that and see descending as simple as that let's see if there's a particular date okay so i think 7th june there have been three different categories where there has been some kind of purchase money has been spent right that is the day rest of it is two or one so 7th june is that date so i'm going to copy this this is question number 28 simple question 29 Use case statement to categorize restaurants as Indian versus non-Indian based on name and show total cost for June, right? So for June, we need to use some case statement logic. Let's go back here, right? So first of all, I will remove all this and I will say where extract of month from date equal to six. Okay, step number one, let's select everything. And then for restaurant, so we also need to format it by restaurant category. So if I go here, for example, Jaipur is restaurant, so category ID should be four, right? So I will also put that as a filter equal to four. So let's see what, what has been the restaurant expenses. So you see a lot, right? So in this, we have to tactically separate Indian, non-Indian. So the only Indian is Jaipur, the rest are all non-Indian, right? So I will simply say, case when company equal to Jaipur pretty simple then Indian else non-Indian okay end as restaurant type you can give it a name and then use sum of cost that's it right so I'm splitting Jaipur versus the other ones the others are non-Indian and now we can say group by this uh, restaurant type right the column that I created for month of June for restaurant category Indian versus non-Indian non-Indian 50 Indian 21 right that is the split up right Indian only Jaipur uh, non-Indian had Panda and other restaurants as well question number I think this is 29 okay so we are getting to the end 30 ratio of total spend for restaurants versus grocery for april okay so april so first thing i will do is i'll put this is four um, can remove this so let us go back to the category table and uh, so restaurant is four a uh, grocery is two right category id so let's note that down so we want to do that uh, total cost only right so i'll do this is a use case of a sum sum if so you can say ratio of uh, restaurant versus grocery right restaurant is four grocery is two that is the id so sum of if category id equal to four right if it is four then do the cost otherwise zero this will show the total for the restaurant and I can simply divide this by
sum of if category id equal to 2 whenever it is category id 2 which is grocery please sum the cost otherwise zero so if i divide both these and i'm putting equal to 4 in the filter because it is the month of april right so let us see what we get so you get 0.36 right what does that mean so if i put a comma and see the values right what is the restaurant spend what is the category spend uh, i mean for grocery so restaurant spend is 63 grocery is 174 the ratio is about 0.36 right so you can put divided by and that will give you the answer so that is question number 30 cool moving on 31 average spend per month at interest store interest store looks like some grocery store so i can come back here you can say where company equal to let's see if there is something called interest store right so i'm gonna just say star yeah interest store is there so average spend per month okay so what can we do we can say company comma let's put average cost i think it's avg but we also want to do per month so i'm going to put our format i mean we can even put just the month so you can say extract of month from date we want and group by we can say these two right so instead of writing company and extra extract of month from date we can also write group by one comma two group by the first and second column this is also possible then we notice okay it's usually 12 15 7 this is average of each purchase right so we can do that or to make it even more correct we can say sum of cost divided by count of listing date so like cost per each unique date that we visit if i do something like this then you see it's around that right march was a bit cheap we didn't buy much but the rest of the ones is around 12 to 15 right so this is basically calculating total cost divided by total number of days we have been this will give you average cost for that month we are doing the same for all the months that was question 31 next one which company in shopping category had the highest total cost i think we did something like this already uh, shopping category with what category id is 8 so i can say where category id is 8 right that's a easy thing to do which company had the highest cost right so i can simply say company comma sum of cost again i can group by one group by one means group by the first column which is company so I can run this. I think there are only two or three companies. So we can see Amazon had the highest cost. Okay. You can also do an order buy if you want. Question number 32. Okay. And then use union clause to show total cost for kebab shop and also panda using two different queries. Uh, so let us uh, see the distinct names of these shops total cost using union so there is kebab shop k and s are capital and what else was there panda okay so we can easily do this we can say company comma sum of cost from table where company equal to first let me put kebab shop um, group by company this is done and then i can use union all and simply copy the same query right only difference is here i will substitute it by panda right they want us to write two different queries to do this give us the total cost for kebab shop and panda kebab shop 34 panda 66 right simple use of union all question number 33 so we are almost there and then finally last question is there any fully duplicate value in the data right that means every row like 
every column should be the same is there any kind of duplicate data like that so this is a bit of a tricky question so i can say select star from and do this right i will run so for this we need to do a check of all the columns if there is any kind of duplicate okay so what we can do i will select everything and then i will say row number right and then i can say over and here we need to partition by every single column so by date company category id and cost and say row number okay alias name let's try to run this query right and we see if i select all the 200 rows i see row number is only one right that kind of means there's no duplicate what does this mean suppose there was row number two somewhere that means that particular set of data is repeating multiple times right so if row number is more than one that means it is potentially duplicate data right so we don't have that so to check that we can put this whole thing in a cte so i will say with cte as uh, and then say to check for duplicates what we would do is we'll say select star from cte where row number is greater than one right if it shows some value then that is a duplicate here it is no data that means all our values are unique unique in each column right that means there is no two rows where all the values for all columns are the same right this is also very challenging and commonly asked question to find duplicates so you can use this method so i'm going to copy that question 34 okay so i hope you enjoyed the video it was a long video you can practice all these questions we have tested a lot of concepts i'm going to put the solutions all the data in our description stay tuned for more videos i'll see you again in another video next week till then take care bye now that we have learned using excel and also writing sql queries you need to understand many a times in your data analyst job you'll be dealing with business stakeholders they might not have the relevant technical skills in this case it becomes important to tell your story and drive your analysis through visual medium so in this coming project we are going to use google looker studio to analyze my own social media data from linkedin youtube and instagram and build basic graphs charts and understand how you can also join data in looker studio and drive simple insights so here we have some social media data this is my actual social media data i post across multiple platforms instagram youtube and also linkedin i post regularly on all three platforms as you may all know so i've just taken the month of the post the year of the post and collected the actual data right views likes and comments for each of these posts right and what was the title what was the idea of each of these posts then there's a column called category id what does this even mean there is one two three and so on so for this sake i have a second table okay so it says category id and the post category right for example category id one is tips two is projects five is like some interview four is more of fun post and so on right three stands for information now what we are going to try to do bring these two data into looker studio this used to be called google data studio before and try to build some simple graphs simple analysis and drive insights okay what we are going to do is the social media data we are going to upload it to bigquery if you want to understand how exactly to do it do check out my bigquery video which i posted a couple of weeks back where i have shown end to end how to upload your data okay step number 1 we need to download this as a csv file okay the social media data i have already downloaded it so i am going to go to bigquery okay i already have a project i am going to create a data set okay i am going to say create data set let's say social right i can give it a name and i can create the data set okay that's it step number 1 is done so i have a data set here now i can click and go and say create table i will upload it from uh, something that i already downloaded so i can simply crawl down and say social media sheet 1 right i have downloaded this data i can call it social underscore media okay this is simple step number 1 schema auto detect and create table okay it will take a few seconds to load let's wait for that and once it's done we have the table okay so if i go to query and i say select everything let me run the data and see 
and now I get the data itself right as you see uh, month the year views likes comments everything is there okay so we have now connected this data set to BigQuery the second data set will stay as a Google sheet now we are going to try to combine both within Looker Studio let's see how to do it so for that you go to lookerstudio.google.com this used to be called uh, data studio Google data studio before so I'm going to type that and this is how you land right you land in a home page something like this so I'm going to simply say blank report okay when you click on blank report basically you have multiple ways to connect right you might connect it to your Google Analytics data you might connect it to your BigQuery you might connect it to your local computer right upload some file you might also connect it to a google sheet right and there are so many other options to connect to other social media platform so today we are going to start with trying to connect it to bigquery okay because i have that table in bigquery right so i go here and i know this is my project in this social is the data set i created and i click on social media okay so i can connect to the table inside bigquery like this so i can simply say add right it will take some time to load and then simply say add to report okay step number one as you see we we have all the values right so if i pull for example the total views and uh, see it across three platforms so instagram had 757 uh, lakh right like 757100 right basically 757100 or 757100 right depending on the notation you use so we have the data like this okay this is a nice and easy step number one now let us go and see some questions right so step number one is they are saying import data from bigquery we have already done that right uh, now we will try to connect the google sheet right with this before that let's see this one right they say write a case statement to categorize fun and tips content as one category other as a separate category right so if i go here i see fun is ID number four and tips is ID number one, right? So whenever it's tips or fun, I want to put it as one category. How can we do this in Looker Studio? So first of all, before that, I'll come and give this a name, social media report. Okay, I can click social media report, give it a name like this. Then I can go to resource, manage added data sources, right? And click on edit, right? Now I can add a new field, okay? Calculated field. Um, and then what else can I do? I can say for example uh, category new right I can give it any name I want so the idea here is so I can use a case statement very similar to SQL so case when category ID right that is the column right when this is one or four right that's what we say then we can call it uh, let's say fun tips right otherwise we can call it other right so we're splitting like this and we can say end okay in sql we'll say end dash here we can simply say end right as you see the formula is correct i can simply go and save right and i can click on done right so we have now created a new column called category new uh, which is appearing here right so if you want to see category new for instance um, as you see most of it is in other category right so uh, fun and tips i have not created as much content so the views is only half right this is just giving us a general idea but you now learned how to create a case statement in looker studio as you see it was very very similar to how we do it in sql okay so first step is done now let us come back to the uh, previous question which is like also connect to the google sheet data and see how can we merge them or combine them together okay so to do this first of all i am going to say go to resource manage added data source and I'm going to add a new data source, right? And this time it's going to come from Google Sheets, right? And what is it? Basically this category ID post, right? That sheet. So I'm going to just select that and that's it, right? You can simply go and add, right? This way now we are connecting it to a second data source as well, right? So we have now social media as well as this uh, category ID post Google Sheet data, okay? Now we have an option to blend or merge or combine the data. So now let us try and uh, do that. Okay. So I'm going to say blend data. Okay. Now what do I want to blend? So I want to join social media table. From here I want everything, right? So I will select category ID, category news already there. I want to see the month, 
of course the platform the year and the title as well right i'm just going to pull all of them into dimensions and in metrics i want to see the views what else i want to see the likes i want to see the comments right yes that's pretty much it right from social media table i'm pulling all the things for this blending or merging process join with another table from this one category id post i want the category id obviously and i also want the post category right that gives us the name now that i have pulled both right i have pulled everything from here and both the columns from the other table uh, we can configure the join we can say select inner join right as you see category id table is common in both so it will join based on that similar to the sql principles so i'm simply going to save right and uh, it will be named as blended data one name doesn't matter so i'm going to simply save okay so, so as you see blended data has come now uh, so now i have category id and category new as well right apart from that the name of the post category right so if i uh, pull post category here as you see in other itself we have information we have projects we also have interview in fun tips we have fun and tips right now they are showing separately so we have been able to blend or merge the data similar to join in sql right so we have done this this is cool we also have all the metrics here and the category id right if i want to see the category id as well i can pull that in so for instance uh, information is category id 3 tips is category id 1 and so on right now we have all the information set up we have also done the merging right now let us go back to the questions so case statement is done so they are asking to observe trends in platforms and also categories right now let us do step by step so we will make sure we don't overpopulate too many graphs too many tables in one sheet so this is uh, the first page right so over here let me do something very very simple so i'm going to just remove this right i'm going to cut this out right and i'm going to click on blended data and let us say i want to insert a simple scorecard scorecard will have simple values like this right so first of all what do i want to see here let us say i want to see the total likes right so i'll drag that in okay so the total likes that i have received right across all these platforms is 25338 so i can copy and paste so i can get a duplicate like this as well and now let me just put the total views okay so total views is uh, more than a million right as you see across all the platforms put together and then i can again just copy and paste right so i can uh, replicate as well and this time let us say i want to put total comments okay honestly we don't get many comments so total comments is less than 500 so we have these three right now this is like just simple top level metrics that we are seeing right uh, before that if you want you can also go and add a text box on top right i can place it wherever i want maybe i'll just bring these down a little bit i think it just got stuck so let me just drag this down a bit also drag this down a little bit and i can say insert text right i can place a text box here right i can say important overall information right i can give whatever name i want right you can play around with the formatting and stuff right so as you see you can make it bold right by selecting the text we can make it bold uh, if you want you can underline it and so on right you can play around with all that i'm just going to drag this make it a little bigger right let's make the size even bigger maybe i can select the whole thing and make it 20px okay so it became a little bit bigger uh, if we want to give it a color for the background or filling also we can do stuff like that okay if i want some background you can also do like this right so um yeah i'm going to just remove this other one so this is like important overall information so i have likes i have views and i also have comments okay you can share it with whatever color you want but this is just giving simple important overall information okay now let's say add new page okay so i'm creating a new page so i've created a new page here let us say i want to add something important right so i can simply say table okay 
I'm going to insert a table. Let's say I want to see by platform. Right? So I want to bring platform to dimensions, the total views, the total likes and total comments. So I'm going to drag uh, total views here, total likes as well, and total comments. Okay, the three main metrics for all the platforms. This is across the complete time period. Okay, so as you notice, Instagram is on top, right? In terms of views, YouTube views overall is not that much. The same trend with the likes, but if you see YouTube is getting com more comments than Instagram. So Instagram doesn't get as many comments, right? Although the views is high, likes is high. Can we show this visually? Is it possible? So yes, we can try to do it. Let's say we want to show different colors for views. I can go to style, right? And I can scroll down. So now we have three metrics, right? Views, likes, and comments. So for metric one, let us say I want to show something different. You can click heat map, right? When I say heat map, you see Instagram is the highest. It will show darker blue color, right? LinkedIn is slightly lighter blue. The YouTube with less views is very much very light blue, right? For instance, for the second metric for likes, I can show like a bar. Right, it shows Instagram has more likes, and if I click on show number, then it will also show the values. Right, you can depict like a bar. Same way for comments. Right, you can come to metric three and select whatever you want. Right, I can say again heat map. It will show a different color. Right, you can play around with the color, but this shows that LinkedIn received much more comments than the other two. Right, so simple trend we can see. So it looks like Instagram performed well on the views and the likes, but in terms of comments, LinkedIn is the best. Right. So this is what we get just at overall picture level. Now, if you want, you can also add a filter, right? So you can say insert a drop down list and over here, for example, I can put month as a filter, right? I can bring that here. Now I can see per month, right? Let's say I want to see only for November. You can select November and see the trend, right? So even there, you see Instagram is dominating in views. YouTube had a lot of comments, right? So I can select multiple months or just select one month, for example, December, or I could select everything, right? So I could play around and see the overall trend, right? So I put month as a filter, right? So this uh, uh, is indicating me that, yes, Instagram is doing well in views and likes, whereas LinkedIn is doing well in comments, right? This is a simple thing we can play around. This is in terms of the platform. Right. So this information is uh, basically about platform. Now, let us say I go to page and click on current page settings. So we get something like this. So we can go to style and, you know, you want to change the size and all you can uh, play around as well. Right. I can go to view mode. Right. So if I go to view mode, for example, what will I get? I can play around. Right. Your stakeholder can go and select a particular month. And they will see only that, right? For example, there is no August data here for LinkedIn, I guess, in this. So only Instagram and YouTube are showing, right? So I can select everything if I want. If I come back to edit mode, I get the access to edit the report, right? So this is by platform. Now let us move to something further. Let us say I add another new page, right? This time, let us say I want to add some more calculations, right? So what I can do? This time, let me again add a, a table, okay? So this time, let's say I want to see by category, right? So I have post category, so I can select that, right? By category, how things are going, right? So I, I don't need the month, so I can just again pull likes, then comments and views, right? Same. So I can just reorder them so that uh, first is views, then it's likes and then it's comments, right? So now I see the values as you see across these five, I can apply the same logic, right? I can simply come to uh, the style section and for the first metrics, let's say I want to show heat map and second metric also I want to show heat map. Okay. I can select heat map as simple as that. And then uh, third metric, let's say I again select heat map. Okay. It's going to show different colors. But now, as you see here, in terms of post category, it looks like informative posts are doing really well overall, right? Uh, tips is also doing reasonably well. 
the others there's not a lot of use maybe there's not a lot of content this could also be the case same way information and tips are getting a lot of likes as well and very good amount of comments right in fact projects and interview did not get as many comments maybe it's because number of project videos are also lesser right this is also something you need to look into but at least you can see what kind of posts are getting views likes interactions and stuff like that on top of this right i can drag this down a little bit and i can say insert same way right i can insert a filter and what filter can i put in here right i can put in for instance platform itself right and see in each platform is there a different trend right so let us say i want to see only instagram in instagram what is happening as you see i have not really uh, posted all types of content here right there's just information tips projects and fun there's no interview post here and you can see the trend right again information is doing pretty well tips is doing well as well right now if i go to linkedin let's see how it's different here there's a little bit about projects but again it's predominantly information and tips and they are doing pretty well as well right and finally going to youtube youtube there's also projects but again information and tips are predominantly dominating right in terms of comments likes and views right so this way you can put a filter for a platform and see in each platform which post category is doing well in terms of overall numbers right now let me go and add another uh, page so i'm going to simply say page and add a new page okay now what do you want to actually do i want to this time insert a table again right but this time the purpose is going to be a little bit different right so what do i want to do here is instead of just pulling likes comments views just like that i want to also do some calculation for example what is the ratio of likes to the views what is the ratio of comments to the likes right or what is the ratio of comments to the overall views right if we get some kind of trends here so for this what can we do let's say i want to see it by platform i can track platform to dimensions right that's step number 1 now i can do some calculations right so i already have a metric here if i want i can add a new metric okay how do we do that you can say add metric and say add field okay now let us say the first one i want to do is the ratio of likes to the views i can type it like that i can come here and write a formula right i can say sum of likes right total likes divided by the total views right you get a formula like this and i let's say i want it decimal with two percentage points you can select like this and say apply okay so this is how i get the likes to views ratio right i can make this a little bit smaller if i want and drag this a little bigger so likes to views i am getting right this is one calculation i am doing already i can also add another calculation if i want right i can simply go here and again say add field this time i want to do comments to likes right this is another interesting ratio let me again say percentage but two decimal points so this time it's going to be uh, sum of comments right divided by the total number of likes right that's it i'm going to apply this right so this is a second calculation i am doing this will be a very small number as you see uh, comments to likes right these are all below 1 percentage but still it's fine to show them right there's likes to views and there's also comments to likes right if we want we can add a third uh, trick as well i'm going to go here and add this so this is nothing but comments i'm getting to uh, the overall views right this might be a very minuscule number but anyway let me just add it right i'm going to say percentage 2 let's say if this calculation even shows some insight so i'm going to say sum of comments but this time i'm going to divide by sum of views right it's a very minuscule very small number that we are going to get as you see 0.01 0.00 right doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, so for instance maybe i can just remove it right i was just testing it but it's not really making much sense very very small numbers so i'm just going to keep the other two okay i'm going to remove comments to use now with this what else can we do we could for example bring in uh, post category right we can bring in post category so we see values across the board right so and i can dra drag this to see everything at one place and now we can also do an execute our heat map thing right to change the colors and stuff like that so for example i could come here 
and for the first metric i want to see heat map right so we get a distribution and then for the second metric also let's say i want to see heat map right you can play around so now what we notice right the dark blue ones right for example youtube tips is having a very solid likes to views ratio right it's not very high but it's 0.05 percent same with instagram tips as well right looks like tips is doing fine whereas linkedin tips is not working right it's 0.01 percent same way youtube information is having 0.05 youtube fun content is also having 0.04 right and if you notice here generally uh, in linkedin right the likes to view ratio is very low right whether it's tips projects or information so that is one thing we are observing then if you go to instagram if there is an information or projects content that is also not doing that well so in instagram what is primarily doing well is uh, to give tips right so it looks like executing tips gives a good likes to views ratio right so out of people who view the video good number of people click on the like button and in youtube generally uh, tips projects and information all are working even fun videos are working right even interviews doing quite well 0.03 percent is not bad so it looks like the likes to views ratio is pretty good in youtube right as a starting point now looking at the other metric which was basically the one we calculated that is comments to likes you see um, whenever there's a project video compared to likes there's a lot of comments right and same with the interview right when i interviewed someone about their data analyst journey and so on uh, these two are working and information video is also working fine in terms of comments to likes 0.13 but you see instagram and all this is non-existent right what is the reason like overall comments only is very low in instagram right if i go back to our first page we see it's only 490 not only that if you see here right you see the comments are very very low in instagram right compared to the views and the likes that is the reason why you see uh, this value is very very low for instagram at least linkedin is fine 0 0.05 percent 0 0.04 but it's not still high right youtube is still doing well even in comments to uh, likes right so that is an interesting trend to note so if i come back to this page you notice that youtube has lower views and likes lower comments as well but the likes to views ratios and the comments to likes ratios are good right so although overall numbers are not that high but still there is reasonably good engagement compared to the views happening in youtube and if we want to pick up specific things it looks like uh, information videos are doing well in terms of likes and when i post a project video or an interview video the comments i get compared to the likes is really solid right so this is some idea i can take to further develop my content in the future right very very simple insights so that is there now if i want to uh, go and add a new page i can again say page and insert another page this time let's say i want to add some simple uh, charts so for example i could select column chart right column chart i could for example uh, put uh, post category right that's a simple example and see okay what is the trend in terms of likes and also in terms of views okay so we could do simple things like this right so i make it bigger as you see fun and interview is very small numbers right they are kind of non-existent and one other thing if you notice is there's already two sets of graphs right because views is in millions right that is the light blue color and this dark blue is the likes one so as you notice information has like a lot of likes and then tips and these two also get the maximum number of views right fun and interview there were not many videos i guess so they're kind of non-existent so i can move this down right as a simple graph and uh, i can again insert a drop down filter right it's pretty simple here i can bring in platform as the filter so i can select by platform and see for example only linkedin what are the values and so on linkedin there's only three types of content i put and uh, yeah you can play around right so it's good to give interactive filters now i'm selecting all the platforms you can select by platform and see any sort of insight simple bar graph with multiple metrics that can indicate some kind of trend right so this is how you can create a bar graph on top of this you can also add some insights right like okay, if you notice information and tips is working you can add this as a bullet point as well right so this way you can uh, play around a little bit with uh, you know your filters as well right so let's say i have this one uh, graph uh, can i uh, do a second graph yes we can right so there are many other options as you see you could like i mean we already saw what's a heap map 
uh, I also showed you what is a scorecard. So you could also create a pie chart, for example, right? Simple pie chart uh, would be to understand in terms of platforms, right? Which has the highest share in terms of views, right? So I can say insert pie chart, right? I can place a second chart here. Very, very simple. And in this pie chart, what I'm going to do, I want to see by platform the trend for the overall views, okay? So I'm pulling views in here. And uh, here I want platform, right? I don't want the post category. Let me just uh, drag platform here. Now you see, right? So Instagram has the lion's share in terms of uh, the total views, almost 60%, then LinkedIn. YouTube is a minuscule, just 1.5% in terms of views, right? That's hardly 20K views, right? This is a simple trend, right? So on top of this, you can also insert a simple heading if you want, right? So you can say insert, you can come here, you can add a text if you want, right? Simple text box, right? And uh, you can move this around and say, for example, view share, by platform right of course you can do the formatting and all right i'm just uh, building out the graphs and the calculations right you can of course format it the way you want uh, you know you can select the text uh, make it bigger as i've shown you in the beginning as well right so this is all there right you can give like a, a color as well you can come here select a random color right let's say I select this one so you can share it and so on right you can give headings for each of these right you can play around with all this right so this is also possible. So keep this in mind, right? On top of that, what else can we do? So if I go here, like we have already done this color coding for most of it. Let's see what other features are possible, right? So if I come back here into this, I have views likes already, right? If I come back into this graph, let us say I want to add another metric. Let's say I just want to see the overall views also as a third metric. I will just drag that in, right? So this way I can see the sum of views as an extra column here. Right. For this column, we can also do a few things, right? So if you go to style, right, there's a way to add conditional formatting similar to Excel, right? You can play around with this. So I can say, for example, add, right? Let's say I want to add a color. And what is the condition? Let's say if views is um, greater than, let's say 5000, I want to give it a specific color, right? For the entire row, I'm going to come and select the color. Let's say I'm going to say, uh, select the color yellow and save, right? I did a simple conditional formatting. So wherever, as you see, it's uh, views is more than 5,000, it will shade the whole thing in yellow, right? So this is also something you can play around and do, right? If you want, you can do it. You can go back and also uh, go to the rule and like simply delete it, right? So this is just to play around, but right? this is also possible. Apart from that, as you notice, if I come to another uh, chart, like for example here, I can also go to um, the setup, right? There's also a way to do sorting, right? You can sort by descending and ascending. You can play around. You can also add a filter to the table, right? I'm just going to click and what can you do? For example, you can say include or exclude, right? And over here, you can like select what kind of filter you want to, you know, impose, right? It, is it for the platform title? So title, for example, only for certain type of title, right? If I come back into the data only for resume or something like that, you can also put and play around, right? That is another possible option. So yeah, that is that. Now let's go back to the questions. So we have done calculations for total views, comments. We did some calculation. Uh, they are asking to observe trend wise for months and uh, drive key insights, right? So we found a few things already. So one thing that we have still not done maybe I will add this as an extra page, right? Is to see by month, is there any kind of trend, right? So for this, let me again go and insert a simple table, right? And I'm just going to do it by month, right? I think I have the column month already ready. So I can just select this um, and uh, yeah, go to properties, right? And then I can drag the month. Okay, and month, I want to see the total views, total likes, and total comments, right? I'm just going to drag these three to see if there is a trend, right? There's like multiple months. So 
again we can simply go and do heat map or bar chart right that's up to us this time just to do something different i can go here and select bar chart and also show the value i am going to do the same with the other metrics as well right i want to do a bar chart and show the value comments i'm just going to leave them as such so now if you notice again november seemed to be the strongest month right and then um, of course october was also strong right you see the build up right august was only 16k views overall across platforms september 80k then 275000 or 275572 and then so on right november peaked right so we see a steady increase in trend in terms of views over months so on top of this i can also add a filter if i want for uh in terms of platform right so again i'm going to i'm not going to insert text i'm just going to insert a drop down list so i can come here right and uh, here i can give uh, platform as a filter right as simple as that so month i don't want as a filter so let me just cut this and just platform right so i can select each platform let's see if there were specific trends in linkedin linkedin there's only data for three months uh in LinkedIn, October seems to be the strongest month, right? In YouTube, let's see. YouTube actually, August seems to be the strongest month, right? But in Instagram, as you see from August, September, October, November, I mean, December, November, in that November seems to be the strongest, right? So there's a steady uptrend up till November. But when we select uh, overall all the months together, then we so see that there's a steady increase. Right, there's August, September, October, November, December actually dropped a little bit, right? So I think that is something to keep in mind. Um, but there's been a steady increase, right, with the drop in December. August, September, October, November showed an overall uptrend, right? So you can drive insights like this and then find which platform contributed to that increase, right? So this is how you can create a report. And basically, if you see here, you can also go and download it as a PDF if you want. You can also share it with people. Right. You can share, uh, uh, click the share option and then you can create, uh, for example, a link. Right. Instead of restricted, you can say public. So I'm going to share the link of the dashboard. Right. Uh, and then I can copy the link and, you know, anyone can view it right on the Internet. Right. So we can do all these kind of things as well. Right. Play around. So now if I go into view mode, I mean, all the pages don't have a title yet. But as you see, we have uh, shown a few things, right? Each page has their own unique story. So make sure each page doesn't have one table or maximum one or two charts, right? Keep that in mind. Now, one la last thing to do, how can we actually uh, give the pages some kind of names, right? This will be very relevant. So for example, I can go to manage pages, right? So I, if I go to first page, this is overall information. So I can give it a rename overall info right i have not put a lot in this page just overall numbers right second page this is i think a platform wise metrics so i can click here and rename it platform wise metrics okay so i can give it a name like this so names are getting saved next page this is i think a post category wise overall metrics again right so rename post category wise metrics right you can give some legible name right that should be enough then here it's i think these uh, specific uh, kps that we are calculating by platform so like let's say specific kps per platform and category right i can give a name like this this is overall likes and view share right so i can rename this as likes and view share and I'm mostly I'm considering by platform and category so I'll say platform and category right simple names and then the last one I think was by month right month wise performance right so we can easily give names like this right I'm saving now if I go into view mode I also can jump across pages right i can go to this page this page ch change and play around with the filter and so on okay so i hope you enjoyed the video right we didn't do a lot but we we learned basics of Luca studio how to use it how to blend the data bring data from google sheet from bigquery how to create calculations right for example in these sheets as you see i've done some uh, calculated field right like uh, comments to likes i showed you how to do that how to do heat map coloring say a story 
keep this in mind i hope you enjoyed the video see you again in another video till then take care bye now that we have learned excel sql and data visualization it becomes important to learn one more tool that can help you differentiate yourself in this job market in this era of ai it is very important to learn python in this coming project we are going to use google collab and write python code to analyze my own food intake and calorie data and drive insights we are going to use some simple functions from packages such as pandas matplotlib and numpy additionally at the end we will solve a few general purpose python questions using loops if statement and so on so here we have a data set it's basically the item i had there is a column called time id i'll explain what that means then the amount of calories of that particular food and also the date right this is some sample data from jan 2024 of the food i actually had like i eat dosa corn flakes curd rice potato fry and so on okay what is time id here so for time id we have a second table so time id 1 means breakfast 2 is lunch 3 is a snack evening snack and 4 is dinner okay it's like the time when i have that food so that is also marked and we have data i think up to 15th of january right first to 15th january 2024 we're going to answer some questions based on this using python right this is going to be there plus we'll have some additional python questions to solve other general concepts as well so here we are given a list of questions so basically <coughs> we will start doing them one by one but before that uh, we also have this small clue to start with this right what does this mean what to do how to do uh, how to use python right this is what we are going to see first so for that step number 1 you simply type collab.research.google.com i will put this link in our description as well this will take you to places like this so over here you can click on new notebook right this is a place where we could actually write python code and execute it right it will set up like this so to begin uh, they just asked us to put these two lines of command i'm just going to copy right uh, let me just copy this okay this one and then the second one okay what does this mean is we want to be able to connect to google drive right from this because the files right are in google drive right so basically these are the two data sets right if i go to my google drive i have already downloaded them and uploaded them as csvs okay calories.csv and timeday.csv they basically contain the same data so you can upload it to your google drive and then over here we are trying to connect to google drive so for that we write this set of command as step number 1 let's see what happens right it will take a little bit to connect little bit of time let's just wait patiently and it will pop up like this give a permission to google drive so we can just click on that and say continue right that will enable us to connect to the drive and i think that's it right a few steps to start out if it is done it will give a green tick that is how we know that it's working okay is still taking time it says mounted so that means this is worked so we could add this plus code to keep adding more and more lines of code right first of all we are going to import some packages right to actually perform some operations one package is called as pandas so we will say import pandas as pd that will be step number 1 now i want to read one of the data set right as i told you there is calories and then there is time day csv two files so to read the calories file let me give it a name data so i could use this command from pandas pd.read_csv right and then all i need to uh, do is i have to copy this okay and then i have to write my drive right because it's coming from my drive and then the name of the file right this is just a syntax so i'll say calories.csv okay and now if i want to see what is there inside data then i am able to read the file so from our google drive we have been able to bring that data into google collab which is able to let us execute python code right so this is there the same way i can just copy the same thing for time data i will just give it a different name right time data i'm going to change this to time data okay and the name of the file was time underscore of underscore day dot csv okay it's showing some error 
let me go and check oh it's time day not time of day so i'll remove the off okay just make sure you put the correct file name and we have that data also right so we are nicely set up so data is there which is about my food and the calories time data is about uh, the you know the time of the day basically was it breakfast lunch and so on right and time id is the common column between these two data set now let us uh, jump right into the questions and sort start solving them one by one read data from the folder this is already done we have finished first question write a command to see what type of columns are present in the data how can we do that so for that we could simply say so like i'll say command to see what columns are present right so this is a way to write comments to make it more readable so i will say data.info right so in in the data table we have item time id calories and the date right so this is how we can see by putting info we can see what is present in the data notice one thing date new is still an object object or like more like a string it's not yet date right keep that in mind we will need to address this at some point okay i'm just going to keep adding more lines of code show only the first 15 rows of the data how can we do that so first 15 rows so for that we can simply write data dot head of 15 okay this is like limit 15 in sql if you say head of 15 you get the first 15 rows right starting from 0 all the way to 14 this is how we can see the first 15 rows of data so that question is done convert the date new column to date or date time data type right why are they asking us to convert it as you notice here it's object right so how can we convert so i can come here convert date new i'll just give it a heading so i can say date of data of date new right this is the column and say data of date new right and i want to convert it so i can say dot apply and pandas has this function called to date time right so i want to convert it into date time so i will do this as a first step okay now that is done if i now write data dot info Let's see what we get. Now you notice date new has converted to date time type because I did the conversion here, right? So now it is no more an object. We have been able to convert it to date time. This is a simple operation, commonly asked question sometimes. Now let's move to the next question. Combine the calories and time date table, right? The two tables with the common link, right? They want us to join or merge the two tables. How can we do that? So if you notice, this is data. The other one is called as time data time id is the common column okay so we need to join on that so i will say combined data right so i'm joining both how can we do that i will write data dot merge of the other table time data right this is how you will do now what is the common column on which we have want to join here we have to notice one thing for the data column data table the column name is time id t with the caps whereas for the time data it's time id but t is small letter right so we have to mention both so the first table or the left table is actually the data table so i will say left underscore on right what is the left column that is common on which we want to join it is this one right time id but t is caps this is one and from the right table which is the time data table what is the column is one i copied now right so it's time id but t is small right this is how we can combine the two tables now let's just quickly see how the new table will look like yeah we have time id so based on time id we join now we are able to get the time also in the same data right we have breakfast or dinner or lunch whatever we know that this is a duplicate column right it is same as this so we want we can remove this how to do that you can say combine data or drop right you can write like this and let us say i i write the small t time id then you can say axis equal to one right this basically means drop the column and then if i want to drop it in this existing data set itself i can write in place equal to true right when i do that this combined data table will lose that particular column as we are dropping it so now once i write that if i write combined data again now you notice that other time id column is gone right now we have only five columns because they were duplicate i removed the other column right that is how you can drop a column so now we've been able to uh, combine them and also drop the duplicate time id column right both these are done now show the data filter the data only for breakfast right how can we do that 
So before that, I'm just going to give a heading to this. So what did we do here is merging the two data sets and also dropping duplicate column of time ID, right? This is what we did here. So now let's move to the next one, right? So I'll keep adding more and co more code. So I'm just saving it again. Okay, so, so I'm just saving it. Something got stuck there, it's okay. So we'll continue. So only data for breakfast. Data for breakfast. How can we filter only for breakfast? If you notice here, breakfast is there in the time column, right? So if I want to show only data for breakfast, you can write data breakfast as a new data frame. It's basically combined data, right? But within this combined data, I want to filter for this column time, right? And it should be equal to only breakfast. So whenever this combined data of time double equal to breakfast, this is how we compare and put a filter in Python. Please show or pick up that data, right? That is going to be stored into data breakfast. Now, if I read data breakfast, I will see now I get only the data where the time is breakfast. This is only purely breakfast data, right? That is how you can do this question. Show only data where it is lunch and also calories, total calories more than 250. Two conditions, right? So time has to be lunch, calories must be greater than 250. So let me put the condition lunch and calories above 250. How to put this condition? So let me say data lunch and 250 above, right? I can give any name. So I will say combined data, that is the data set again. Within that combined data, I have to introduce a filter. So what is the filter? The first filter is time has to be equal to lunch, right? That's the first rule. And also you can put an ampersand and say, the other column is about calories. So I'm going to copy this, right? Uh, column name is calories with the C. And this has to be greater than 250. That is the condition. Okay. And remember, when we give multiple conditions, we have to put each of them within a separate bracket, right? So this condition in this bracket, then an ampersand or an and, and then the other condition again within these uh, normal brackets. Okay. So once I do this, now let me run and see data lunch 250 and above what data we get. Now we only get data as you see of lunch and only above 250, right? So basically there's only curd rice, which I eat during lunch, it's more than 380 calories, and then pizza, right? Pretty much it. And then once fried rice, which was 350, right? These are the only three items that I eat during lunch that have more than 250 calories, right? So that is how you could solve that question. Next one is group by time ID. Time ID is like by breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. See which had the overall highest calories intake, right? So how do we solve this question? Let me just keep adding some more code. So calories by time ID, right? So time ID column is there, but I could also do by time because time contains lunch, breakfast and all. For this, what we can do, we can simply say combine data dot group by, here we have to do group by similar to SQL. So I want to group by time, right? And what I want to do is I want to do for calories, right? The total sum, right? So to see which is the time when I eat the most amount of food, so I can see like this, I run it and as you see breakfast 6650, dinner is 6175, a little bit less, snack is not every day, so it's less, lunch is where I eat the most, right? More than 9000 calories in this 15 day time period. So lunch seems to be the highest amount of calories, the time when I eat a lot. Next one, sort the data of the given, uh, you know, information by calories in descending order, right? So how can we do that? So this is sort by calories. This is also a very straightforward question. Okay. So I can say combine data dot. There's a like order by in SQL. We have sort values. It's a command. Right. And then I can say by what do you want to sort by? I want to sort by calories. Right. Just put that column name. And what is the rule? I want to sort it in descending. So there is a function called ascending here. I mean, not a function, an argument. You can say ascending equal to false. That means you want to sort in descending order. Now let me run this. Now you see 
Dosa is come on the top because that's the IS 400. Banana is at the bottom because that has the lowest calories. Right? So it is getting sorted in descending order of calories. The highest calories is coming on top. This is how you could do a simple sort. Okay, just let me save it one more time. And yeah, I'm going to come back here. Next two seem very straightforward. So show the unique values for the item column. How many unique dates does the data have, right? So let's see here, unique items, right? This is very straightforward. So I can say combined data of items. I think it's item, right? Not items. So item, what are the unique values? I could simply say dot unique. So you see dosa, cornflakes, bread, smoothie, poha, carrot, veggies, beans, tamarind, rice chips, pizza, all this, right? All these are the unique values of items that I have eaten in these two weeks time frame. If I want to find unique dates, but also do a count, right? What is that? So I can simply copy uh, the similar formula, right? So here I, the column name is date new. That's the only difference, but I want to count, right? So unique is similar to distinct in SQL, right? If you want to count distinct, we can write n unique. Okay, n unique is another function that will count the number of unique values. So it says 14 values. Okay, there are 14 unique dates in the given data set. That is what they wanted us to count. How many unique data set is, dates is there in the data set? Next one, they say rename the calories column to intake, right? The calories column name should change to intake and the time column, which is this breakfast, lunch, dinner thing to time of day. How can we rename? Okay, this is an interesting question. Rename is a function that's also sometimes asked in interviews. So first of all, what is the rename? I can like create a new map in a dictionary. Okay, so first of all, what I will do, I'll write, okay, calories is there. Please rename it to intake. Okay, that is what they want us to do. And the other one is there's a column called time. So you write this colon symbol and write, I want to rename that to time of day. Okay, this is what they're asking. Step number one. Now, in the original data, right, combined data, you can simply say combined data dot rename. Okay, and what is the renaming that should happen? So the columns should be changed to what is given in the map. Okay, you can say columns equal to map. What does this mean? So calories will change to intake, time will change to time of day. Now, can we cross check our combined data? Let's see. Now, if you notice, instead of calories, we got intake, instead of time, we got time of day, right? So you create a normal map using a dictionary and then use the rename function to rename the columns, right? Pretty interesting question. Then coming to next one, from 12th January to 13th January, can you show the percentage increase in total calories, okay? Now, remember calories column has been renamed to intake. So we wanna find percentage increase in intake from 12th to 13th January. How can we accomplish this, right? So I'm going to keep adding more and more rows. So 12 to 13th Jan, percentage change in calories, right? Whether it was increase or decrease. First of all, let us see the data, right? We have combined data like this, right? Now for each day, right? We want to first do the total sum of calories, right? How can we do that? So first of all, I will say group by date new, right? I want to do for the overall day, right? Not by breakfast, dinner and all for the overall day. So I'll do that. And then I want to do total calories. So intake is the column and do sum. Okay. So if I do like this, you will get for each day. First, first Jan 2024, 2150 is the overall calories. Second Jan is 2130 and so on. Right. But here, if you notice, we don't have the column name here. So if I write reset index, right, if I use this, now you'll notice we have date new and intake, okay? This will be step number one. Now, step number two, what can we do? I want to compare it with the previous value, right? This is similar to lag function in SQL. So what can we do? I can write combine data of previous value, right? I can create a new column. How can we do this? I can say combine data of intake, right? And simply say dot shift of one, right? This will basically pick up the previous value, right? And I put it in a new column called combine data previous value. Maybe I shouldn't do it on the combine data. I will do it on this calculated group, by, right? So what is this? Let us say 
aggregated data. I will write AGG data equal to this. Okay, so, so I'm going to run this code. And now I want to do it on the AGG data, not on the original data. So I will also convert this and change it to AGG data. Okay, just observe what happens now. What is this shift doing? Okay, so for example, first gen intake was 2150. There is no previous day value. So obviously it is null, right? NAN is like null. Second January 2130, previous value is 2150. We are getting that here. 4 January, for example, 2055, previous day or previous value is 1750. We are getting that here. Okay. If you notice for 11th, it's 1225, but previous day is 1600 that is coming here, which is good, but previous day is 9th. Okay. So that is missing. We will still not be able to address that. So just going to pick up the immediate previous value of date. Okay. For us, we are just focused on 12 to 13. So basically from 13 and 12, how did it have changed, right? So 12 was 1475, it increased to 2100, but we want to do this calculation, right? So what can we do? I can just come here and add aggregate data and create a new column, okay? Percent change, right? I can give it a name. So this is going to be nothing but aggregate, like I'm going to put a bracket. So aggregate data of intake value, right? minus aggregate data of the previous value, right? Percentage changes, the current value intake minus previous value is overall thing divided by aggregate data of the current, I mean, the previous value. So that will show how much it has increased from the previous day or how much it has decreased, right? So something like this, I think there's an extra symbol here. This should be good. Okay, let's now see aggregate data, what value we get. Okay, so we're getting, for example, on 13th, right, from 12th, if you compare, 1475 became 2100. So that's almost a 42.37% increase. From 12th to 13th gen, I increased my calorie intake by 42.37%. Okay, this is how you can do this question. So this is nice use of, use case of the shift function, right? It's very similar to lag. So I'm just going to add more and more lines. Let's go back to the questions. Use some function in NumPy, NumPy is another package, to create a new column which, which says small meal if that you know the time of the day is snack. Otherwise, it has to say main meal, right? This is a very simple use case, right? Similar to the if function in like Excel. So I'm going to go back here. What I can do, so this is NumPy function. So I can first import the package numpy and call it as np. Now for this new function, I can say combine data of, let me say meals, right, new column. So what should it say is, it, the function is np.var, numpy.var. So basically when the time of day, right, that is the column, right, whenever the time of the day is double equal to snack, right, I have to call it small meal. Otherwise, call it big mean. Okay, this is what they want us to do. Simple calculation like if. Now, if I see combine data, I'll have the new column. Okay, so breakfast is a big meal, dinner is a big meal. When wherever there is snack, right? So if I want to quickly verify this data for snack, it should show small meal, right? So wherever this time of day is equal to snack. Make sure you put the spelling right. Let's see. So wherever it's snack, you see it's small meal. So our logic is working, right? Dinner, breakfast, and lunch will be big meal. Snacks is small meal. So that is how we can do. Use np.var. It comes from the NumPy package. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Rank the food. So we need to do ranking which had the highest overall intake for breakfast, dinner, and so on, right? What does this question actually mean is, in breakfast, which was the food which had the highest total number of calories? Was it dosa, or was it bread? Same way for lunch. Was it curd rice, was it tamarind rice, whatever. Same way for dinner. Was it pasta or was it something else? For each time of the day, right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, which food had the highest total calories? How can we do this? This is another interesting question. So like rank food, for each time of day, 
right? This there is a random function similar to SQL in Python. We will try to explore that, right? So I'm going to first load the data, combine data, and what I want to do first is I will say combine date. Let us say this is ranking, right? So I'll give it a name, rank data. So I want to do combine data dot group by, right? And I want to group two things, right? So based on time of day and also the food, right? Basically the item because I can eat the same item on multiple days. And for this, I want to do the total sum of intake, right? Let, let me do this. Let's see what I get. Okay. So now let me see rank data. What is there? Okay, I'm getting like this. So if I do reset index, right, I will rerun this. Let's see what we get now. Now we get three columns. So breakfast, totally bread, I have taken 1000 calories, right? So for instance, if I come to the data here, bread is 250 per day. So maybe I've taken bread four times, right? In this two week time period and same with so on, right? Poha total calorie intake is 400 and Poha was part of breakfast, right? So in breakfast, dosa is 1,600, but in dinner also, some days I've taken dosa, that is 700, right? This is how we are splitting the data. Now we want to give a rank, right, within breakfast, which is the topper, right? So if we look at the data here, can quickly see, I think it looks like cornflakes is the highest in breakfast in terms of intake. How do we give a ranking? For that, can create a column called rank and see how this logic works. So I can say rank dot group by Okay, and I want to group by time of day. Okay, so this group by is very similar to the partition by views in rank in SQL time of day. And what do I want to rank? I want to rank the intake. So I'll say dot rank of and here you have multiple methods. Okay, method you see within that you have average min max first and dense. Dense is similar to dense rank. Then we have first min max. You can play around. For now, I'm going to just put first, right? This is one of the methods and then ascending or descending, right? This is like order by ascending is false, right? Because I want to do it descending order of calories. Now let us see what rank data is showing, right? So group by time of day is like partition each time of day separately, then total the intake, intake value is already total and find the rank, right? So within breakfast, which is the highest within lunch, which is the highest, we will be able to find this out. Now let's start the query and see. So notice we got the rank, right? So within breakfast, rank one goes to conflicts, 2000. And I think the least is seven, rank seven, which is vermicelli, which is just 200. If I come to dinner, for example, the topper is milk. Like every day I have milk for sure. So that is the highest. And then when I come to lunch, curd race is leading the way, right? More than 4,000 calories, right? And in snack category, also there is milk. So I drink milk a lot, both for evening and night. So milk is the topper again, rank one, right? So this is how you could partition by time of day and based on intake, do the rank. There's also dense rank, like method equal to dense, just play around with it. But this is one way to showcase, okay, in each time of day, what was the food that had the highest amount of intake overall across this two week time period. Okay, next one, a simple plotting question. Plot the time of day category and the overall calories using, uh, plotting function. Okay. So for this, we can just go to chat GPT and ask, uh, plot package, matplotlib, how to import. Suppose you don't even know the function, for example, it should ideally give you some sort of an answer. Import matplotlib as pyplot, right? I could come here and copy that. So this is plotting and go and give the name. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? each time of day total calories. So we have done this multiple times. I'll simply say plot data. This is nothing but combined data dot group by, right? I want to group by time of day. Step number one, calories is now called as intake dot sum, right? So if I see plot data, it'll be like this, okay? Now, if I want to actually plot this, what I can do, you can see, PLT dot bar. If I want to show a bar graph, I can say plot data dot index. Index is nothing but the time of the day. 
and also plot data dot values. Okay, values is the values we have. So if I run this, I'll be able to plot, right? Okay, I see breakfast, dinner, lunch is where I have the most intake. Right, simple way to plot. You can also see ways like how to add x axis, y axis, and all right. Try with ChatGPT, but this is a simple way to plot, right? So you import the package, do the group by, and then you say plt, which is nothing but this package dot bar. Want to plot a bar graph, plot data dot index. Index will be the time of day, values is the calculation, right? The sum of intake that we did. This is how you can do simple plotting. One more question. Write a code to find rows which contain name pasta, right? So I think there is pasta somewhere. Uh, if I scroll down, you see. So you want to see the rows where there is pasta. How can we do that? I can create a new column, combine data of, let's say, check pasta, okay? You can give whatever name you want. So I can say combine data of this item column, right? It should contain, right? The string should contain pasta. So I'm going to say string dot find of pasta. And now if I run this, we'll see mostly minus one, right? Wherever it is not found, wherever it is found, there will be some value, right? So how can we try and do that? So I'll say combine data of combine data of check pasta, right? This column wherever it's greater than zero, right? Wherever it's not minus one, let's see what we get, okay? There's like literally no value like that, right? That's a bit weird, let's check. Let's say not equal to minus one, okay? Yeah, okay, it's, it shows zero here, right? So it's able to find it at the zeroth place. The, that's why, you know, we should not put greater than zero, but should put not equal to minus one, only two values. Right, I think on second Jan and seventh Jan, I had dinner as pasta. Right, it was able to locate that. That is that question. Now coming to few general questions beyond the data set. Little bit about loops we will see. Write a for loop to display only multiples of five, starting from five all the way to 45, right? I wanna show five, 10, 15, 20, so on till 45. So for that, let me just add a few more lines of code. So how can we do? multiples of i you write a simple for loop so you can say for i in range uh, you can begin it at 5 take it all the way up to 45 in steps of i okay and in each of these cases you want to just print the i right print the value here you will get only till 40 right because whatever you include here it will check only till one number before that so here it will go only till 44 so before 44, the closest multiple of 5 is 40. So if you want to show till 45, you can increase this by one number. Now we'll show 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 45, right? So simple for loop you can use to show the multiples of 5 all the way up to 45. Same way, for loop to display squares of numbers from 1 to 9. So very simple, I can just copy the similar formula, squares of 1 to 9, okay? So here, what I have to do, I have to start with the number one, go all the way up to number, I want to show till nine, so I will say 10, and in steps of one, that is okay, and print the square of the number. So I will say print i into i, that will show one, four, nine, 16, all the way up to 81, right? i into i means i square, right? So for each number, whenever i is one, it will show one, y is two, it will show two into two, which is four, and so on. Since I put 10 here, it will go all the way up to i equal to 9. When i equal to 9, it will show 9 into 9, that is 81. We get that, right? Then one more question. Write a simple code to declare a variable a as 8 and write an if statement to say if the value is greater than 8 or not. So this is if statement. So they say declare a as 8. And I will write, so if a is greater than 8, then I will say print a is above 8 okay simple and then i can put else condition so else what should i print print a is not above 8 okay now let me execute this code and it will say a is not above 8 as you know a greater than 8 condition won't work the else condition is working right if i put a is 6 again 
A is not greater than 8, so the else condition will work. A is not above 8. Okay. If I put A as 13, then if A greater than 8, condition is true. A is greater than 8, so it should show A is above 8. Right. So you can play around. This is how you can write a simple if and else. Make sure this I and E are aligned in the same line. That is very, very important. Okay. One final question. Declare a simple list with B with four values 0, 1, 2, 3. Write a for loop using try and accept for running i values from 0 to 6. Whenever there is no value, print value unavailable. What does this even mean, right? Looks a bit complicated. Let's see, right? So this is a list question. So we they ask us to create a list B with four values 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, step number one. So I'm going to execute this. Okay. Now, within a list, if I want to read an element, if I say b of 0, it will read the first element that is 0. If I say b of 1, it will read the second element. What is second element? It is 1, right? If I say b of 2, it will read the third element that is 2, right? That is how a list works, right? List index starts from 0. Now, they want to show us these values and run it in a for loop for i ranging from 0 to 6, okay? So, you notice if I write b of 3, it will show the fourth value that is 3. But if I write b of 4, it will show index error, right? Because b of 4 means the fifth value in b, b has only four values. There is no fifth value, so it shows index error, right? So we have to be careful. Just going to change this to something else. Now, if I write for loop, right, for i in range, they want from 0 to 6. I'm just going to put like this, right? And they want us to print the value within b right so i'll say print b of i if you notice here so when i is 0 b of 0 is 0 right i is 1 b of 1 is 1 i is 2 b of 2 is 2 i is 3 b of 3 is 3 but when i becomes 4 b of 4 is not there it's an index error that is what is showing up and they are saying use try and accept statement to remove the index error and say when there is no value present print value unavailable how can we do this so for this, we have to add this in a try and accept statement. So first you will say try, right? Wherever there is no error in those cases, the for loop should work, right? Make sure they are aligned. Step number one. So I'm printing B of I, right? In the cases where there is a problem, where is there is an index error, you can say accept index error, right? Wherever there is index error, in those cases, you can simply print what they're saying value unavailable or something like that okay now let's see what we get now we we get value unavailable right so 0 1 2 3 is coming that is great but when i becomes 4 b of 4 is not there since value is not there it shows value unavailable this is better than showing an error so you can use try and accept for these cases where there's some specific type of error like index error okay so what i will be doing is i will uh, share the link to this whole notebook right you can play around with the code i will also upload the data sets please upload them as csv and then use this code to start reading them okay i hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you again in another video till then take care bye